Hi, everybody. This is Ken Wilson. Once upon a time, I broadcast blues hockey. I always listen to Let's Go Blues Radio. It's everything you'll want as a blues fan. Oh, baby. Need more energy throughout the day? Looking for a kick to your workout? RockinThatIDLife.com has you covered with delicious flavors you've grown to love in tropical fruit and mixed berry, but now fall in love with the new fruit punch and orange flavors. Try them all at RockinThatIDLife.com. Realtor Mike Burgoyne with Real Brokerage LLC makes the moving process easier. Work with a realtor who plays and studies the game and will work as hard as the boys on the ice to get you the best deal. Check out Mike on the web at strikewithmike.com and jumpstart your move today. That's strikewithmike.com. Get ready to hear some noise tonight. You're just seconds away from Let's Go Blues Radio. Let's have a Tony Brook. Eric Brewer was so bad. <laughs> Are we like Ogil Corp? Are we suspended? I I reciprocated the dickness. Selfish, Selfish hockey. hockey. That's right. Selfish hockey. What did I tell you about stick tape? You don't need it! No doubt about it, eh? You're listening to Kurt, Bill, and Jeff on Let's Go Blues Radio, the original St. Louis Blues hockey fan podcast. Take it away, boys. Hey, Blues fans. I like to consider myself a friend of the show. This is TSN analyst and former Blues netminder Jamie McLennan. And here's Kurt, Bill, and Jeff on Let's Go Blues Radio. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the greatest podcast about the St. Louis Blues that you've ever heard. (laughs) That's right. It's Let's Go Blues Radio, the show that's so good, it'll make you want to put on some skates and hit the ice yourself. I'm your host, Kurt Price, <laughs> and as always, I'm joined by the hilarious Jeff Fonder and the dapper Bill Day, but folks, we couldn't do this show without our secret weapon, the man behind the curtain, the wizard of sound, the one and only producer Austin. Now, you might be wondering who the heck producer Austin is, and honestly, we're still not entirely sure ourselves. He's the strange little man who lives in the basement of the studio, and we're pretty sure He subsists on nothing but coffee and old hockey bucks. But hey, he's the guy who makes us sound good, so we'll keep him around. On this show, we're going to be breaking down all the latest Blues news, giving you our expert analysis on the team, and maybe even cracking a few jokes along the way. We'll have interviews with players, coaches, and anyone else who's willing to talk to us, and we'll even let you in on some behind-the-scenes secrets that the other podcasts don't want you to know. So buckle up, grab a beer, and get ready for a wild ride, because Let's Go Blues Radio is about to take you on a journey that you'll never forget. And who knows? Maybe producer Austin will even make an appearance. Just don't look him in the eyes. Courtesy of... Chat GPT, that intro. That right? was literally an intro written by Chat GPT. That was <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> oh man, that was awesome. <laughs> I, I like the the part about the uh, the other information that other podcasts don't want you to know. Like they're withholding information from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. There's like a secret blues podcast society, and we're leaking everything right now. <laughs> they hate us. <laughs> that is amazing. I, so if we run that again, will it, will it come up and spit out a new intro? Yeah, probably. Um, I gave it a few details, like, you know, our names and everything. But it, it, it's, it's learned a whole lot <laughs> since you did it last week. I, I mentioned nothing about beer, and it knew that, it, you know, beer was a thing with the show. So that was that's kind of funny. Well, I didn't mention this, so we should go ahead and give it a quick mention here. So thank you, ChatGBT, you, you freaking liar. Uh, special thanks goes out to our sponsors, rockin.idlife.com, strikewithmike.com, and centerizebrewery.com for proudly sponsoring the show. Please check them out. So Chat GPT left that out, so we'll make sure to get that in there. Yeah, we can. <clears throat> I, I, when I told Chat GPT to write us, or asked it to, I forgot to put in the sponsorship stuff, so it would have. I love how you, I love how you rephrase to asked because you're like, I don't, yeah. I don't tell it anything. No. I, it no. does what it wants because you, I don't want to piss it off. You don't want to make it mad. <laughs> when it becomes self aware, you want to be on its side. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's why every time I, I talk to my Google Home, I'm always like, "Thank you." <laughs> just <'cause laughs> <Me> like, <too. laughs> why do you say thank you? I'm like. Yeah. You never know. You just hey, don't fuck with that guy. He used to say thank you to me. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want 
You don't want Google Voice? I hate that guy. <laughs> yeah, I used to scream at my uh, my old car Bluetooth thing. It was not Google connected, but no way will I do that now. It's it's Google Assistant the whole way. Never gonna piss that thing off. Mm-mm. If you know so, what's good uh, for you, Matt Harris. AI generated intro to the podcast is scarily accurate. <laughs> that, that's what we said when. <laughs> Because Kirk posted that in our chat, and we were like, oh, God, that is way too accurate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, we, we got um, a number of things to talk about tonight on the show. We got the Blues are officially eliminated from playoff contention, uh, even though they're playing you know, quite well right now uh, in the last 11 games or so. Um, and we'll talk about the um, playoff lottery coming up, or the uh, draft lottery coming up, and where the Blues uh, may finish there. Um, they're in danger of playing their way out of the lottery, even though we got some tough games coming up. Uh, and uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, Blues and Flyers uh, game we'll go over. And uh, the Hockey Hall of Fame debuts uh, a new exhibit celebrating women's history of the, in the sport. And uh, Daniel Briere's son is in some hot water. Some of you may have known. Uh, heard what he did during a uh, he was at a bar right yeah it was a bar was a and he situation. he misbehaved he's being kind of he a dick did. a big dick tisk tisk yeah don't and, misbehave at a bar son yeah and he has been removed from the uh, Mercyhurst University's uh, NCAA hockey team they announced yep. that on Monday and so. we'll also talk about Pride Night and uh, yes. so Matt Harris will be discussing that but I uh, wanted to go ahead and read his comment here. Uh, and our resident uh, proud member of the community. Uh, he says, by the way, to throw my thoughts out there, I'm overall very happy with the Blues Pride Day. I'm happy with their representation and their strong acknowledgement of the night. And I'm happy with where uh, the money was uh, to from a chunk of the proceeds. Also, Shen is an absolute legend for his comments. Give him the C. Yeah, I, I did love Shen's comments as well. Yeah, I, I love how he stepped up. That he was That was captain material. Mm-hmm. What he said, yeah. um, couldn't have said it any better. Um, while at the same time he's respecting everybody else's, which you have to do. You can't, you can't come out as a player and you can't, you know, out your teammates. You can't condemn your teammates necessarily. And he was very politically fair about the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I thought, um, mm-hmm. and, unless your teammate is Tony D'Angelo, right, or uh, one of the Stall brothers, one of the Stall True. brothers. Or yeah, or well, James Reimer. <laughs> yeah, nobody. I mean, none of the Blues, uh, and we can talk about more of this later. But no, we don't know if it was uh, specific Blues players who didn't want to wear the jersey, and then they, uh, you know, uh, the whole team decided not to wear it, or the, the Blues just announced they weren't going to wear the warm-up jerseys. But uh, everything else apparently went off very well. Um, but it is it is a shame that one of the more visual, the most visual aspect about Friday night uh, was not. Uh, on hand. Well, we are uh, we are very very welcoming to our uh, pride community. So I just want to point out, first of all, one of my favorite shirts that I own here, my Center Ice Brewery Pride shirt. Uh, I got the very last one. I think you guys were with me when I got this. Hmm. I asked if they had any left, and um, uh, I remember who it was somebody whoever was at the bar was like, "Yeah, uh, we don't have any left. They're gone." I'm like, ah, man, just missed it. And then I came back to the bar like five minutes later and somebody threw me one. They're like, there was one left in the back. And I'm like, yes, I don't care if this is a small, I'll wear it. I'm going to squeeze into this thing. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it fits perfect. One of my favorite shirts. You know what? If it it were too small, just crop off the bottom and wear it as is, you know, a nice little tight crop top. Yeah. You can wear it. Little Jim Edmonds love. Yeah. Yeah, Jim Edmonds love. You could wear it to the naked bike ride in the Grove. Uh, or just be naked. Summer, or just be naked. Yeah, just the, just the crop top and just naked the rest of the way. Oh, That's, that'd be Lord. a good look, wouldn't it? <laughs> I don't understand how anybody can ride a bike naked. Oh, um, you know, no, thank I've, you. I've been to the naked bike ride a couple times, and it's... That's the one thing I don't understand. I don't... You know, I'm not naked when I go. Most people aren't. But a, 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 I mean, I, I want to say a shockingly high number of people are naked, even though it is called the naked bike ride. Um, there's probably 20% of the people there are naked, which is a lot. 
So. I'm sure I've told this on the show before, but the first time I'd ever even, you know, being a St. Charles kid, I had never heard of the naked bike ride. And for those not in St. Louis, are probably like, what the hell? There is literally an event every year. It's in May, right? Uh, usually like July. So hot. July. Okay. Hot so it's it's the it's literally a naked bike ride. They do it in downtown St. Louis through the Grove, through Soulard, I believe. And, uh, yeah, they just ride around town. Like you said, most people aren't, but there are a couple people who get fully naked and go ride their bike downtown. Oh. And first time I ever witnessed it, I was at a bachelor party, and uh, we had just, uh, let's just say, partaken in some party favors on the bus. And we're riding through town, and one of my buddies was like, oh, yeah, it's the naked bike ride tonight. And we look out, and there's just tons of naked people riding their bikes. Now. Imagine that as somebody who's like high for like the third time in his life. I'm like, what is, is this? What happens just, when you get high? What is going on? We're this is happening in St. Louis all the time. Like, what is happening here? It's the it's the world naked bike ride. So it is not just St. Louis. It's ha- they schedule this event in other big cities around the country too. They're in the world too. That I believe. blew my mind. I was like, I can't believe this is a real thing. Yeah. How how long ago was it that that happened when you saw people go by for the first time? 21. I would have been 21, so... That has been a while. 12 years? Okay. No, God. Uh, 16 years. You're much older than that today, uh, yes. Jeffrey. Yeah, that was, right. <laughs> that was before I, uh, before I did it. Carry so. the one. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the pandemic. Everybody discounts the pandemic. Yep. It still counts. No, I... Yeah, 16. I'm 37. I was going to be 38, so actually it was probably... You're 37? 37, going on 38. In a row? Know. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> From Clerks. From Clerks. Thirty-seven. I know. I know. <laughs> you suck thirty-seven dicks <laughs> in a row. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, hey, that was a a topical joke for the following up the naked bike ride discussion. <laughs> so, uh, well, one more thing that I want to mention since Austin's here. You see this butte behind me. Austin, what do you think of this, bud? You know, let's bring him on. Come on. Come on over here, Austin. What do you think of this beautiful trophy I have here? You're a cheating son of a bitch. Oh, is that what it is? You Not are. that I f- fucking won a hockey tournament against <clears throat> Austin fair and square. Hey, guys, you want to hear what happened in the semifinal I game do. against Austin's I team? Do. I do. So uh, we were down uh, th- three to one, Austin. Was it three to one? Yeah, it was three to one. Oh, Austin, we don't need to three talk to one about this. With thirty, <laughs> with with a minute thirty six left, wow. down three to one, and uh, Austin's uh, against Austin's against team. Austin's team. Okay. They so they were going to beat us, and we steamrolled through the uh, the 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 round robin round. So it was like going to be a huge upset, and we're like, oh man, I can't believe we're going to lose this. I put all my scores on the rink for the final six minutes of the game, just loaded my lines. And, uh, yeah, we scored uh, three goals in the final minute 36. Uh, last the... one came with, like, 10.6 on the clock. It's because I wasn't out there. Yeah, it's, did oh, you, trust did me, you have... we would have scored five if you were out there. Did you have the blue? <laughs> Austin, were you using the Blues defense in this game? <laughs> <laughs> Your goalie was fucking insane. He like, was amazing. I actually, even though we won and I was excited, I actually felt bad for your goalie because he stonewalled us all game. Like we we had dominated play pretty much all game, and yeah. all of a sudden in the end we finally pushed through. But it was just like the dude was just overwhelmed. He probably faced in a thirty minute game. He probably faced thirty five forty shots. Yeah, but he like, allowed he three goals in the closing minutes to lose the game. Obviously, he sucks. You know what? No, you've really, defense, turned, me, you've really turned me around on this, Kurt. You're right. He's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll say, I, and I, I know a lot of people disagreed, save of the tournament was on me with about two minutes left. I was out there briefly because, you know, I'm not a goal scorer, but I was out there in front of the net. Puck bounces in front. I have a wide open, gaping net, and I was, like, confident. Nobody on me. I'm like, oh, yeah, here we go. This is going to make it a one-goal game. Fucking dude, as I shoot it, just literally does, like, stretches across Superman, like, gloves my shot. Wide open net. And no, I just was like, I just threw my hands in the air. I'm like, I, I was like, right there, that was it. That's the game. Like, if I would have scored there, 
we're back in it. Like, that's the game right there. Luckily, we scored right after that. But I went to the bench, and I'm like, it's over. There's no way we're beating <laughs> yeah. this guy. Yeah, it's over. I again. If I can't I score, no one's scoring. I but scored. I mean, dude, I, I had again. a wide open net. Oh, man. It was the widest net I've ever had open with now, the goalie actually. Okay, <clears throat> be honest now. Did you put it where you wanted? I should have roofed it. Okay. I just I just saw the empty net and I just shot it at the empty net. It was off the floor. I did I did shoot it about waist level, but I should have roofed it and he wouldn't have, he would have had no chance. But I just thought, man, if I roof it, I'm going to miss the fucking net. I just need to put it on the net. Uh, from, that's not a winner's mentality. That's, that's speaking, what I'm here. speaking as a forward Always, even when – always put it where the goalie can't get it. <laughs> even if it's – Yeah, I know. It was like, I'm going to put this top shelf on this empty, empty net. <laughs> Throw the hands <laughs> when, to the ceiling. But, dude, it was it was still just a miraculous save. And I was like then – like, I even skated the bench in my team. The, the the guys who end up scoring all the goals were even like, yeah, that was it. That was, that was the save. We're done. And I'm like, yep, sorry, boys. But we ended up coming back and scoring three. <clears throat> And yes, I will give credit to Austin. He had a pretty nice snipe in that game as well. I did. Was it a goal or just a good snipe? No, it was a goal. It was a goal. Yeah, he scored. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I scored twice. Right? I had two goals uh, in the tournament. Two yeah, I scored. Tournament. Yeah, I scored. I scored on Kincaid and Frank. Yep. Yeah, our goalie was Frank. Frank Hart. <clears throat> I saw that. Yes. I saw the pictures. Yeah. He was phenomenal. He played the best. I, in my opinion, he deserved MVP of the whole tournament. Frank, he was so good. Frank has gotten. Frank has. I, I you know, I was uh, known Frank for a long time, and uh, I didn't realize how good he had gotten. Uh, yeah. I, I, the the last Ponder Cup I played in, uh, I he stoned me a couple times. Uh, I had a chance where I came in, got a pass uh, a left side. Uh, come in, fake forehand, and go quick backhand up high, and I got all of it, and it was going tucked upper corner. Uh, is he? He's lefty? No, righty? No, he's he's a he catches right. Okay, yeah, catches right. All right. So he's, and and he he's it, a weirdo. Yeah, and his, <laughs> I mean, he stole me, and I was like, holy shit! How? The, I mean, he was going the wrong way, and he corrected and got up there, and I was like, damn. And uh, the only one I scored on him was off my off my back, <laughs> a shot that grazed off my back and beat him. And With the exception it. of of Austin's goal, the the nice snipe he had, and maybe one or two more, almost every other goal was either off a bad turnover by one of us or just an insane deflection, like going off somebody's leg or like going off a hand. He had everything else all night. He was phenomenal. Yeah. Anyway, well, so, both of our goalies were great. Well, congratulations. Frank, oh, yeah. Oh, dude. Frank yeah. played a ha- hell you. of a tournament. Yeah, he did. He was phenomenal. And, yeah, your goalie, again, I, uh, Rushing, I think his name was Adam Rushing. I couldn't tell uh, him. Yeah, I I, I never met the guy, but he was, oh, he was really good. I wasn't um, there yes. when uh, everybody introduced themselves. Yeah, um, Austin missed the first game. He had a blown tire. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, so I guess, I guess Frank's fully recovered and he's playing because he had a throat issue he is still going through uh his treatment yeah okay wow he's and that and he's such a fucking badass dude yeah that absolute badass going through cancer treatment and playing in a tournament and not only playing in a tournament kicking ass in the tournament and winning the whole fucking thing it's gotta be exhausted he looked great (sighs) afterwards he hung out he was like oh i'm good and i'm like (laughs) dude how are you such a badass you got kryptonite in your veins or something? <laughs> That's funny you say that because he's like a right. Superman fan. Right. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> all his, all his uh, masks that I've ever seen him wear were Superman tributes. So. And he paints his own, yeah. too. Yeah. He's really good at Yeah. I feel he's, like he's one of those guys just good at everything. <laughs> yeah, he's he's come definitely come a long way. Oh. Like, you know, when we we first, you know, he was, first came up um, when we were playing at Oak Hill. Yep. And, you know, it's just starting, you know, he had the desire and it, it, it took a while, but he was, you know, that when I, what I saw of him the last time I was out at the Ponder Cup, he was, he was pretty damn amazing. And uh, he was super happy. Me. Yeah. Super happy to hear that he's, he's, you know, on the, sounds like on the right side of this battle. So you would never know by looking at him that he's going through shit like, no offense to my friend Scott Kincaid, who we held the tournament for a couple of years ago, but you know he he was pretty rough for a while. You know it was leukemia. It's gonna 
destroy right. you. Mm-hmm. Frank, you couldn't even tell. This dude is just he is just looking great, acting great, great. I mean, just everything about him, his sense of humor is still there. He's got a great um uh outlook on it. He knows he's gonna beat it. Um just love it. Man. So inspirational. So did you guys sleep together or something, or the way you're talking about it? I like... wish. Good Lord. <laughs> man, I wish. <laughs> I would be so lucky, man. <laughs> well, congratulations, right. Jeff, and, uh, and Austin as well for, you know, uh, almost getting there. <laughs> yeah, too bad your team couldn't hold on to a lead. Yeah. Well, we play by the rules, Jeff. Oh. Who's, whose fault was it, Austin? <laughs> whose fault was it, Austin? If you if you could blame on one my team, <laughs> no, Joe Wolf. I'm kidding. Uh, I'm no, I will get his exact name. Well, I'm not going to put him on blast. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Oh, I can't. so you actually do have somebody in mind? Who's <laughs> I was I was totally joking. <laughs> yes. I, was, I hope it's who I. Th- it's, I hope it's who I think it is. It's exactly who you think it is. Yes! <laughs> Somebody I'm not a fan of. <laughs> See, the right thing to do is to blame yourself. If you're on the spot. He's like, he oh, wasn't yeah. even on the rink. <laughs> well, what I'm saying, well, well inspirationally, I, he didn't have it, right, from the bench. He wasn't cheering loud enough or something. I don't know. You can't. You right, can't. We stop talking about beer league hockey here, but I do just want to show off <laughs> more the beautiful more trophy entertaining. that we win for this. More entertaining. Uh, okay, let's do uh, the official beers of episode number 407. You can follow each of us on the Untapped app. My handle is CPrice12, Jeff's is JPonder94, and Bill's is Billy, Bl- Billy Blue Note 33 And Jeff, uh, thank you for taking care of the intro because uh, I was finishing my line's choice, <laughs> which, I, which I was enjoying. Kinda you know hard. what? I think, I think we determined last episode that line's choice beats everything. L- yeah, line's so- choice takes a backseat to no one. Yeah, exactly. So, like, for me, it's like, hey, Blues are playing. I need my line's choice. (laughs) Show starting. I need my line's choice. I I I sat down, and I'm opening my bag, and you're like, have you not even started eating yet? (laughs) Like, I I wasn't, like, judging. I wasn't judging. I was just like, oh, you didn't start eating yet. Fucking eat, dude. That's line's choice. Don't let that go cold. (laughs) It's good reheat, too. (laughs) Um, uh, I think we're at cart starting now, right? Are we? I don't even have my... Who knows? My Lion's Choice Coca-Cola in my nice Lion's Choice cup. A large... It's not root beer. It was a large... Doing it wrong. No, I'm not doing it wrong. Doing it wrong. It was a large king meal, roast beef. Uh, quite good. It's gotta be the root beer. Got some extra extra seasoning and some extra... And some honey mustard and some au jus. Quite, quite tasty. I think Ken's been uh, listening to us too much. His... His joke here. Did Austin score twice on the ice or with one of the chicks in the stands? Uh, Austin, there was what, maybe a total of three women in the stands? About, about three or and four. One was a one was a crack whore just kind of one might have been a guy. One might have been a girl. I don't know. <laughs> one well, one was our <laughs> photographer. Uh, so we'll count her. <laughs> uh, we had Peyton at the bar. So oh, I forgot two. about Peyton. Well. <laughs> All right, Bill. All right, me. Me, me, um, yeah. Uh, so I don't think I've had this one before, but keep it crunchy granola stout. That sounds um, awesome. It's yeah. pretty damn good. A granola um, stout. I have never heard unless of that. it's crunchy. It's not a crunchy uh, beer, is it? No, it it keeps it crunchy, but it's not actually crunchy. It's okay. like pop rocks, where it's kind of crunchy and it explodes in your mouth. <laughs> it, it, it's it's the weirdest sensation. <laughs> Uh, so it's uh, it's it's a uh, from Omegang, out of Cooperstown, New York. You ever heard of Cooperstown? I've heard of it. They got, they got a little thing there. Yeah, yeah. It's a oh. racetrack. Yes, yes. <laughs> I it's, thought it was your a son. Your circus. son owns the town. Right, my son Cooper. Right. Oh. So yeah, no. This town. is uh, this is really good. Um, you know, for as compared to many oatmeal stouts I've had. First time I've had a granola stout. It's really good. Only complaint is you got to pour it really slow because it foams like nothing else. They say that you're supposed to pour beer fast. Not this one because you know you, you've you've seen the 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 analysis that you 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 basically pour a regular beer like it's a nitro beer, and yeah. and you you let all that foam out because and if you do that in the pour. Then you're not going to feel near as bloated when you drink a beer because it, it'll do all the expanding mm-hmm. in the class as opposed to in your stomach. Mm. So that's a that's a that's a thing that people do. 
Well, I have one left. I will try it with that. I just have a feeling that I'm going to need really big, like, really big lash. I'm, I'm going to need like a, a 32 ounce pitcher for this. So. <laughs> but no, very good. Very good. Like this a lot. Cool, cool. We got well, my beer is one I've never had before. It's it's tasty. Uh, it's the it's one I've never had. It's the Blue Moon Mango Wheat. Um, basically, like I told you guys off air, uh, it tastes like a mango cart. If you have never had that, it's basically I would imagine this is their answer to the mango cart. But it's it's good. It's tasty, nice and uh, summery. Uh, that was be a good one with the weather changing. Uh, you said so mango cart, <clears throat> which I mentioned it is the that's like one of the only beers that I'll get at Cardinals Nation. That's I enjoy it and they have it there. They have AB products uh, on draft there and that's uh, one they have and I always get it um, as speaking of which Cardinals Nation. Um, just real quick, DJ Joe is back behind the uh, mic uh, officially for um, the official cards pregame party at Cardinals Nation. So. You should, uh, if you have not been to the official St. Louis Cardinals pregame party before a Cardinals game, you need to go. We talked about it last year. We gave away tickets last year. Uh, great time, great time. Where can you get tickets for that? Is it just, uh, is it just through Ticketmaster, Cardinals dot com? I, I think it's CardinalsNation dot com. It might be on Cardinals dot com too. I forgot actually. You can uh, let Austin Joe, it up. You can Austin meet Joe in a back alley on the other side yeah, of the stadium. Right. You can also you can also tag uh, you can also uh, hit up DJ Joe on uh, Twitter. His uh, handle is at uh, Cards Pregame, I believe. So, and he uh, he he gives away tickets sometimes on um, on Twitter for to people who respond. And it's uh, hey, what, two and a half hours before the game starts, and you get uh, all you can eat, all you can drink, um, and there's entertainment and prizes it gives it's, away. It's uh, music it's like forty. It's, 40 bucks it's like for tickets, 40, right? 40 45. Yeah, and it's I mean, all you can eat for 2 and a half hours, $45? Looks I mean, like it's oh. uh you go to mlb.com/cardinals, so basically the Cardinals okay. site. Okay. And then there's a ticket section and there's a pregame party okay. area. All right, there you go. So yeah. And I think uh if you look on I, I think there is a um promo code that you can use to save 5 bucks, I think. Um but I think you can get the information from uh, Joe's account on Twitter. He posts stuff like that yep. all the time. So and well worth it. Again, if you're new to the show here, you've never heard us talk about it, we won't go into great detail here. But like you said, all you can eat, all you can drink. Um, uh, great entertainment from Joe. There's games being played. He's somewhat of a comedian. So, you know, he's uh, you know <laughs> telling jokes the whole time. And um, it's just a great time. Um, man, I, 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 I told my buddy about it. And he is, like, so excited. We always go to a game every year. For whatever reason, we didn't last year. But him and I, that we make it a point every year to go to a cards game. And I'm like, this year we're doing the cards pregame party. And he's like, yeah, what's that? And I told him, he's like, so you're basically saying we can get absolutely loaded before the game starts for 40 bucks or 50 or whatever it is. 45, I think. And Yeah. And uh, basically that'll last us the whole game. We don't have to buy a drink down there. No. That's exactly what you're saying. Yes, that's that's it. What, what would, he's like, holy shit, that sounds amazing. I'm what like, would, I know, it is. What would $45 get you inside the stadium? A uh, couple of beers and a, a hot dog and a pretzel, maybe? I would say $45 is typically what my wife and I would spend on pretzels and two beers. Yeah, it's it's, it's not cheap. The, the beers are like $14 or something like that. Yep. So it's a, it's a really good deal. Hit it up. Um... Let's see. Uh, so I guess we can get right into it. The uh, Blues are officially eliminated from playoff contention. That happened on Sunday. The 4-3 to three shootout loss to Boston mathematically eliminated the St. Louis Blues. Uh, for the first no postseason trip in the Bruby era. So, I mean, I think this was a long time. We saw this coming from a mile away, right? I mean, this, this is not something that is a surprise. Um I guess right now <laughs> the focus is on where we're going to finish, right? Um, in the lottery. So, um, you guys, so I would ask you guys if you're disappointed. You're probably, I mean, you, I know you probably are, but what, like your mindset right now, as far as you've come to grips with the, how this team is and what this team needs, and this team is not as it stands right now close necessarily. So, well, 
Andy Andy Baker from uh, I believe it's uh, Fox Two uh, that yeah. he's with. He yeah. he tweeted like a week ago, a week and a half ago, maybe uh, something about you know I know we're supposed to be rooting for losses, but and I know it's it seems impossible. But what if this team just goes on a run and makes the playoffs? Would you be excited? <laughs> and I was, and everybody's like, no, 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 draft picks, draft picks. And I'm like, wait, if we made the playoffs, would... yeah, they'd be so. Oh, a, there's there's I... people saying they they don't want that. They want they well, know this team's not winning a cup. There's always so people. What's the that. point? The, but if, but if we can't me, if we can't win the division, they don't want to be in the playoffs. Well, and, those people and like for that. me, it's different from even last year when when there were some people, yes, last year saying they're not going to beat the Avalanche. So what's the point? Ah. This is much different to me because, yes, going into this one, one hundred percent, no way they win the Stanley Cup. There's no way. I, I just maybe a sliver, I guess, because they're in the playoffs. But it's very unlikely. But I would still love it if it would have happened because it's like. This is the team going forward for the most part. Like this is this is the roster for the next couple of years with a few minor exceptions. If we can see them play well down the stretch here after all these trades and still make the playoffs or even just finish like a point yeah. or two out, <clears throat> holy shit, that would be incredible. I would be like, "Yes, this team has the drive. Add a couple more pieces next year and you never know." So yeah, I I would have loved it. I, 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 I've always been on the, if you can make the playoffs, make it. You know, I, I'm, I, I'm not. I, I've, I mean, I understand the, the, you know, where people are coming from when they say, um, I don't want this team to make the playoffs. I want, you know, the finish low and draft picks. I get it, but I don't agree with it because we've gone over it before. You know, so many cool things happen in the playoffs. I mean, yeah, the end goal, you do want to win the Stanley Cup. It's all about the Stanley Cup. I get it. Only one team can win it, though. And, my God, the the, the, the stories that we have from years where the Blues made the playoffs and didn't win the Cup, holy hell. I mean, tons of tons of stories. Fantastic moments. Even just last season, right, with, with the water bottle and everything, with Kadri. I mean, just... So, I mean, I, I, there's always something going on. Playoff hockey is amazing. Yeah, yes, it's all about the cup, but playoff hockey is the most exciting playoff format in sports. So, I mean, I'm always – I'm all behind that. You, you, think, get, you get that, you, you know, extra week and a half at least of, you know – and, and it, it's not even just an extra week and a half. It's – you get that payoff of getting excited – being nervous all day long. How's it going to go tonight? How's it going to go tonight? Yep. There's nothing like that. The regular season, unless in, except when you're, you know, the Blues in 19, when you're playing so far from behind to make it, right, that you don't have those nerves like you do in the playoffs, right? I, it's just thinking back to, you know, to last year and going to the game when uh, Kadri injured Bennington, right? It's like, how oh, the this game could do it. This game could flip the script. Mm-hmm. And, you know, then, of course, we know what happens. But, yeah, not having that always sucks. Yep. That said, yeah, I... this team has been so shitty, they don't deserve <laughs> to make the playoffs. No, just, yeah. yeah. Right. They, they, they are where they should be. Right. right. They're yes. exact. Yeah. They, they are. And yeah, it's it, I'm I'm gonna miss it, but hey, I can latch on to another team, pick a team from the east, pick a team from the west to you know have a rooting interest. There's gonna be hockey on every night, you know. The fact that it doesn't involve the Blues, yeah, it sucks. But why why should this team be there? It's almost like a stress reliever. I mean, you can we can take a take a breather as Blues fans. This playoffs, it's you don't have that. Like you said, that that all day long, kind of that nervous tension, leading right. up to a game. You don't have that necessarily, so you know you can take a take a breather this off season and, and come back at it next year. Um, and to me, I don't really have a team I'm pulling for hard. There are some playoff series that I'm just going to sit back and love to watch, mm. and I'm yeah. going to root against Boston. Anybody but Boston. Oh, yeah. um, I it, 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 I don't care I, Colorado versus Boston. It's Colorado all the way for me. Um, anybody but Boston. I, I do not do not care who it is. It's ten p.m. Do you know where your children are? They're in Boston. 
Boston. Uh, I I don't know. That's a good. You say anyone but Boston. Mm, seeing Colorado repeat, I don't think I want that either. Yeah, but I, I, I <sighs> if it comes down to Colorado or Boston, I you're probably right. I think I'm probably rooting Colorado. Well, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to be happy. I'll say this: I'm not <laughs> rooting for Colorado. I'm I'm rooting against Boston. There's a big difference there. So, That's true. Yeah, just I, like when the Blackhawks would be in the playoffs, and pretty much there'd be teams they play like Detroit, and I'd be like, I'm not really rooting for Detroit, but I'm rooting against Chicago, so I'm kind of rooting for Detroit. I'm kind of I kind of want to see Toronto finally do something. I want to see him lose. Do you? I, I mean, I, uh, oh yeah, I, I, I'm I'm all on board for the drama because there, you know what's going to happen. But I, I'm 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 I wouldn't mind seeing them go a couple rounds, and I don't know, I don't know. I, I'm just I, I'm in awe of the whole Toronto uh, drama train every playoffs now. Yeah. <laughs> so it's so funny. Yeah, as as a Canadians fan, you know, I, I, it it is everything you know against you know my my being to actively root for the Leafs but this would be the one year I wouldn't be so disappointed because we could see Ryan O'Reilly get another Stanley Cup mm. I would love that right but uh you know I I you know the I, I just can't bring myself to to actively root for them. Um, I well, you know I, 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 when O'Reilly first got traded there, I'm like, oh, maybe I can do it. And I, just, I just can't get there. Um, I, I think I'll rephrase. I'm all, I'm all for just seeing it get blown up. That's what I want. I think I'm all. I think I'll rephrase. I'm up. I don't think it's going to be like a rooting for Toronto necessarily. I just think I'm going to enjoy whatever happens, whether it be. Uh, a disappointing playoff exit again because you know you know Toronto is going to explode, the the, the media is going to explode. Uh, or if they go somewhere, then the hype is just going to build and it's going to be interesting. So either way, it's going to be very entertaining for uh, surrounding Toronto in the playoffs this year. And they got a tough, they have a tough road to go to get anywhere <laughs> to to right. advance. I mean, right? It's Tampa again. And Boston, if you beat Tampa, Tampa, then you get Boston. Yeah, right? Ca- Ca- Carolina's there, but they lost. Uh, what's his face? Um, Svechnikov. Yeah, Ron Francis. Ron Fran- there's a there's a <laughs> long time ago. Sorry. Yeah, long time ago. <laughs> Rod Brendamore. Rod Brendamore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 what's his name? Oh, I. Brett the moment, Hedekin. The moment's passed. Brett Hedekin. Yeah. Eric Stahl. Eric Stahl. Arthur Zerbe. Um, what's the oh, what's the guy we had? Um, shit, defenseman. Um, Cole, no, was it Cole? Oh, oh, no, uh, oh, um, God, had like a really, b- like, like solid face. Sean Hill, Sean Hill, yes, <laughs> Sean Hill, <laughs> solid face. <laughs> he did. He had one of those faces he, you do not. Forget. He had a chiseled face. You know, it was like a, it was like an anvil. His face was. <laughs> but, but I mean, there's so many tough teams in the East. Um, yeah, it's it, it's the conference of death, right? It, it so who I I haven't looked at the standings lately. Who's Boston getting in the first round? Uh, let's take a look. <clears throat> I don't know if it's official yet. I think the only no, it's not official. The only yet. series right, that's it's, official right now is uh, Tampa and Toronto. Right, Bo- Boston because, is because of Boston's dominance. Probably yeah. the Islanders right now. Right, they get the first, the last, the second wild card, right? Yep. So it's the pro- right now. It's the Islanders. Islanders. Right now it's the. Well, it could. I mean, it could be Pittsburgh. They're, they're neck and Pittsburgh. neck. It could be Florida, Pittsburgh. Okay, Let's one of three. T- it's going to be Florida, the Islanders, or Pittsburgh. I Let's think. go all three of those teams. I don't even <laughs> like Pittsburgh, but man, I want to see them beat Boston. Oh, I would. I, I don't hate Pittsburgh. I never have. I, um, I think it dates back when I was a kid. I love their logo. So I, I just, used to love them as a kid because I was a big Mario and, and Yamir fan, mm-hmm. but I don't like them anymore. Um, I think I I think uh, I lashed onto them when they won back to back. Was it the early nineties? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Beat the uh, the North Stars and then the Blackhawks. Yep. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So the Blues have won. Let's see, seven of the last eleven games. They're seven, two, and two. Um, not exactly what some fans want the team to be doing right now. 
Uh, they have wins versus uh, Washington, Winnipeg, Detroit, Anaheim, Vancouver, Chicago, uh, Philadelphia, and overtime losses versus Detroit and Boston. The uh, overtime loss to Boston on Sunday was Boston's 60th win this season. And um, it also, as I mentioned, eliminated the Blues from the playoffs. Um, Boston joined the 1976-77 Montreal Canadiens, uh, who had 60 wins, the 1995-96 Detroit Red Wings, who had 62, and the 2018-19 Tampa Bay Lightning, who also had 62 wins as the only teams to reach the mark. So they have a good and shot. What And what did the Lightning do in 2018-19? Mm, they didn't do anything. They didn't they win a game. They lost by, to by Columbus. Yeah. So let's see that again. <laughs> yeah. God, wouldn't that be amazing? Uh, I... <laughs> How yeah the Islanders sweep the uh, the or uh, well who has the best chance of beating Boston Florida mm. I probably Florida I right? think it's the Islanders you think so yeah I like their structure against Boston more than I like Pittsburgh or uh, Florida yeah I think I think Pittsburgh and Florida have better players but I think the Islanders play a good system against good teams so I'd love to see it. If Bo uh, Horvat, when he gets into the playoffs, is a monster. So. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we all – Blues fans know that. <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, – a um, couple OT losses there to Detroit and Boston. That sucked. But, yeah, I mean, you see some some wins there. Uh, some decent teams. I mean, Washington's not a playoff team. Well, they're still, you know, they're still battling. Winnipeg's battling for playoffs. Uh, the Winnipeg win was impressive. 3 nothing. That was, a, that was yeah. an impressive win. That was. Yeah. Yeah, and if you think, go back to the Blues losing 3 nothing in Winnipeg after starting the season so hot, yep. what, what the script is, right? Came at the wrong time of the season, I think. Yep. And I think uh, a few weeks ago, we talked about um, where we thought the Blues would finish, um, and I think I mentioned I think they'll finish uh, like the fifth or sixth worst record in the NHL, something like that. And but right after that, they started scoring goals, <laughs> and uh, their their schedule got weaker, <clears throat> and they went on this run. So now they're tenth, um, and the the bottom eleven are eligible for the lottery. So they're tenth. Let's see. Let's uh, the, let's see the wins for the Blues. Can you imagine right now? Just just to just just play out that. The Blues are a playoff team right now, right? Like they didn't trade any of those guys. They're yeah. you know they've had a decent season. Going into this stretch, if they were battling anybody <clears throat> for playoff positioning, like oh you know if we win the next five games, we take first place to the Central. The schedule that they have right now, would you not have loved that? Licking your chops going into the end of March, like oh my god, the oh. Blues are going to take the division. Well, like, yeah, good lord. Except for our last four games are tough. <laughs> right, right. But up until now, yeah, the, the last eleven games or so, winnable games, and the Blues have won them. Um, yeah. it was, it was tenth, uh, tenth uh, worst team right now, tied with Detroit. But Detroit has a tiebreaker, so they're they're number eleven right now. Um, so we're in the draft lottery currently, two points behind. Could, hang on, yeah. hang on. So can you imagine if the Blues have a tiebreaker to be in the draft lottery and they lose it to Detroit? Oh. How can Detroit still fuck us when they're in the Eastern Conference? <laughs> we <laughs> fucking Christ. We did get Verona though. That's like a That's true. That is that is our that is we're holding on hope with Verona next Detroit season. Detroit is like they're all just like, "Hey, let's fuck the Blues over again one more time yeah. just for old time's sake." <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, two points behind Ottawa and Buffalo, who are currently outside the bottom 11. Buffalo has a couple of games in hand, though. Uh, Buffalo, they had such, like, it wasn't that long ago. They were, like, in a wild card spot or very close to it. Yeah. Uh, they had games in hand. They were just on the outside looking in, looked good, and they have just not. <laughs> They've been Buffalo. Well, Thompson, Thompson was injured for a while. Is he back? Oh, is he? Uh, I think I think I don't he know. is. I think he is. I actually don't know, but he got injured, and yeah, their their wheels fell off. I Buffalo, they haven't had the number one pick like Edmonton did, but man, are they not starting to remind you of Edmonton there for a while? Yeah. Good lord, they cannot Even pull their shit together. Two picks, right? You should you should get pretty decent. I mean, they they have so much talent on that team at this point. 
and it just for whatever reason they cannot get through an entire season without the bottom falling out right? yep. it, uh, it, it's it's painful Tage Thompson uh, is back um, he played um, he actually played on the 4th and he played on the 25th, 24th, 21st so he wasn't out for too long I think he only missed a game or two but yeah. it seemed like when he went down all of a sudden they couldn't win a damn game well uh, he only has two goals in his last uh, what is it uh, 14, 12 games two goals in his 12 games 8 points yeah, I, Either way, He's Buffalo, man, that's that's a team that I'm starting to get annoyed with. Like, pull your shit together or just fucking rebuild it again because I'm tired of seeing them at the bottom of the fucking standings. I'm I'm not. I I, mean, I kind of feel, I feel bad for Buffalo fans, but me too. I, I'm but on the other hand, I'm just so sick and tired of the of the O'Reilly Thompson talk and and all the crap about since look look who's good now bullshit. I just, I'm, I just like whatever. You guys are. This is terrible. all that matters. This yeah. is all that matters. I'm like, right you guys here. are still terrible. You know. <laughs> yep. Win something and then talk. I don't know. Yep. Um. So St. Louis's final four games are against the Rangers, the Minnesota Wild, and a home and a home versus Dallas to end the season. So that's pretty tough schedule. Um, and those rooting for the Blues to lose may get their wish here in a few of these games. Based on how tight the standings are for the teams we're playing, they could very well be going – the teams we're playing could be going all out in these games because they're fighting for position two. So, the, I mean, it's, the Blues could lose out in these, I mean, in these four games, which would benefit them, right, uh, draft-wise. So that would only help them. I'm not going to lie. Like, part of me does hope for some losses here, but – at the same time, I got tickets to the last game, so I'm like, I kind of hope I see a victory because I what, I'd love to end the season on a high note. What if you saw like an eight-seven overtime loss? That'd be kind of like a fun game to watch. I don't right? want to see that. But no, it's I, a lot of goals. Give me a, give me a two-one. I don't want to see a lot of goals. Do you know me? Wait, wait. What you had fun last week? Yes, I had fun with you guys because I was with you and I was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I don't know if I'll be drinking next Wednesday. <laughs> uh, okay, well, uh, come from behind, you know, steal a point. <laughs> give me a give me a two one overtime loss. I'd be happy with that. As long as it's a good I'm a de- game, I'm a defensive game. That's what I'm saying. I want to see Bennington play well. I want to see some good defensive play. Give me a two one OT loss. Give you a, give you a nine five eight say percentage for Bennington in the game. Sure, which is like that a, sounds great. Be his highest in like forever in a game. Yeah. Man, they really tried to fucking lose that game last night, didn't they? Oh, <clears throat> that, Jesus Christ! I was, I was, you know, worried. <laughs> but, we'll get, we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> so the remaining schedules for the teams that the Blues are kind of jockeying with here, and these uh, for the final uh, last couple lottery draft positions. Uh, Vancouver is four points behind St. Louis, with one game in hand. So uh, you know, they, we could finish below them. They have games against Chicago, Calgary, uh, Kings, Anaheim, and Arizona. They have a pretty light schedule. So uh, they could be winning some games. Who knows? Uh, Washington uh, is two points behind St. Louis with one game in hand. Uh, Montreal, their schedule is uh, at Montreal, Florida, Islanders, Boston, the Devils. Very tough schedule. So Mm -hmm. that's not – you probably can't count on uh, maybe them passing you up in the standings. Um Detroit is tied with St. Louis with one game in hand. Uh, they have games against Buffalo, Pittsburgh, Dallas, Carolina, and Tampa Bay. Also a tough schedule. Um, yep. Senators are two points ahead of the Blues. Um, then they play at Florida uh, against Tampa Bay, Carolina, and then at Buffalo. So there's some tough games there. Um, and Buffalo is two points ahead of the, of the Blues with two games in hand. And they play at Detroit against Carolina, the Rangers, the Devils, Ottawa, and uh, the Blue Jackets. So a mixed bag there with Buffalo, and but they have two games in hand, so a lot can happen with Buffalo. I think the worst the Blues could probably finish at this point is uh, maybe the eighth worst record, or, or the best they could finish, I guess, if you want to look at it that way. Um, <laughs> and the, the highest they could finish is uh, maybe 13th. So if they... And if, I honestly, I hate to say it, I think that's their destiny. Oh, uh, really? Out of the lottery. Even with our schedule? Yeah. 
They're playing good hockey lately. The rest of these teams aren't playing that great. We're playing good offensively. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. no. no I, hey, I hope. I think, you know what's funny is I'm saying I think the Blues win, yet you guys are being the optimists. <laughs> I, I, I think we, I, th- I can see us split in <laughs> Dallas. Uh, yeah, and especially the last, I, especially the last game of the season. If, if 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 things can't change for Dallas, they may rest people. So, I mean, that, that's that's you know that's yeah. uh, the bridge of caution to come to it. Um, so maybe a win against Dallas. Other than that, I don't know. Yeah, no, I I think I think you might get one point out of Dallas, and I think that would be a overtime loss in the game at home next Wednesday. Um, I think you go to Dallas and whoever is, uh, whether it's Jarenko or Grice, gets that start. And, uh, you know, maybe Dallas, like you said, rests everybody. I don't see the Blues winning that game. I hope that Saturday at Minnesota is just a fucking old school bloodbath. Oh. <laughs> and yeah. every Blues player that plays that night gets suspended. That's, That's what that. I'm hoping for. I've got that down as the game to watch, right? Oh, yeah. Isn't it? I mean, it I, has to be. I, I, but you know, you know that the NHL is going to fucking police that game like crazy. They're going to tell the officials, call everything. Fucking yeah. uh, the head of officiating is at Stephen Walkham still. Yeah, uh, he'll probably be at that game. Yeah, like you know, this is gonna Kate be Whitmore. like guys <laughs> are gonna get fucking kicked out there. for any kind of argument. Like it's it's gonna be like that. They've done that before, and it's I hate that. But anybody I guess looks I at Ryan it. Hartman wrong. <laughs> a, oh yeah, you know, they're suspended oh, you, five games next year. You just you just hit Ryan Hartman into the boards. That's five minutes. You're out. See ya. <laughs> You're trying to start a fight. <laughs> uh, I hope the NHL handles it like any other game, but I, I'm afraid that things may be said before say, "Hey, keep this under control." Oh, they will. And if I, mean, I don't think Bennington is going to do anything, um, just because it's expected. Does that, if that makes any sense? Um, now, I'm not saying he won't retaliate to something if something happens or if somebody gets in his face. I don't think he's going to start anything in this game. I think it might be in his mindset. He's like, I should probably be on my best behavior against Minnesota. Um, but I can totally see him like not taking anything. Um, but uh, I'd, I'd like to see him start. Maybe Brubery doesn't even start him. Maybe just to, just, to, just, to, just to avoid the circus. He may, he may. I mean, if Zarenko's still with the team and Grice is still out, maybe this is his first initial start. Um, Man, I wonder if if there's some part of Baruby who's just like the 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 tough guy he was. Yeah. He's just like, yeah, I kind of want to see Bennington kick someone's ass. I'm sure that's in him <laughs> still. And after the the last Blues and Wild when they played, when the Florida Minton had their almost dust up. Uh, he didn't have a problem with what Bennington did. Um, no, so as he shouldn't. Right uh, now, it doesn't condone this the blocker to the face. Right, that's no. not. But as far as him getting upset about what happened, yeah, that's uh, he totally understood. <clears throat> so maybe he would start him. He's like, you know what? He didn't do anything wrong. Let's start him. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just I. If I'm Berube, I start him. I I, I want oh, I, I want. Something. Give me the mayhem. Oh my God! And you know, Give Minnesota fans are going to be all over Bennington. Well, and you got to figure if Bruby's wanting wins here, which he does. He's a coach. He's not the GM. Um, he's, you know, he's probably sitting there saying, Bennington has proven before that when he is in when he is in hate mode, when everybody is just rooting against him in the arena, this is when he plays his best. So I think it. If you're wanting a win, you start Bennington. Yeah, and, and I, <clears throat> well, the one of the games against Dallas, you think would be the backup, right? You think Bennington would get the season finale, probably, right? At Dallas, or yeah. you think, or, or you think I, I, Bennington gets the home game? Home. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah, he gets you're the right. home game. He'll get the home game, if and he's then not suspended. <laughs> 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 I hope he. I, you know what? I mean, I, I get suspended. Go ahead. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> the more I'm, the more I think about this coming Saturday night. Like it, it's, you know, 
maybe, maybe we need to have a poker night at my house. We're going to watch the blues in the wild. And then we're going to go into uh, the uh, uh, city Game. versus Sounders. Oh yeah. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, Ken Morris says uh, Paul Bissonette claims Benton has dethroned Brad Marchand as the most hated player in the NHL. I heard that. Um, I, I, that was an interview. Uh, they were talking with Marchand. And uh, you know what? Um, I think Benton is just the hot topic right now. I, but I think Marchand has that lockdown still from just, just everything that's happened. Oh, I agree. They, uh, uh, I, think it was, I think it was TSN posted on Facebook too, like – Who's your uh, Who's the most hated player? It was after this claim from Bissonette, and it was Marshawn Bennington and um, Tom Wilson, and yeah, yeah. everybody was like, "Are you kidding me? Were you really having this discussion?" It's it is and always will be yeah. Brad Marshawn. Yeah, I, he he licked people. I mean, yeah, that's what one guy even said that he goes, "The minute Bennington licks a guy, we'll have this conversation." Yeah, <laughs> Bar- Marshawn licks people. He runs around the ice uh, starting shit. Um, and Bennington has what three or four incidents a season. Marshan might have twenty. It's like you yeah. know, come on. It's, it's not, how it's about not. how about Bennington stopping Marshan on the yes late long breakaway oh. Sunday? Oh, wow, that was beauty. Oh, wow. yeah. And then Marshan coughed it up. Uh, and the Blues almost scored. Uh, was that late in the third or was that overtime? Uh, uh it might have been overtime. Yeah, Marshan was in his like at his own blue line, and he kind of fumbled it and coughed it up, and the Blues came in and and uh, did he go for a line change? Was, was there seven <laughs> seconds left? I was it was I was thinking the same thing actually. <sighs> um, all right, uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, I I uh, think we should go ahead and take a break, Kurt. That's my that's right my now. Vote. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and take it. All right, we got some more. Okay. All right, because uh, we're uh, we're getting ready to talk about uh, Zarenko. Right? We're getting ready to talk about Zarenko uh, being called up and uh, some news about Scandella uh, and Matt Kessel. So um, we'll talk about that and other Blues news on the other side of this break from our amazing sponsors. You're listening to producer Austin, Jeff Curtinbill on Let's Go Blues Radio, the secret weapon. We'll return after these messages. Every beer league hockey night, I grab my hockey bag and sticks and throw them in the trunk of my car. And the very next thing I do, I mix up a boost of energy courtesy of RockinThatIDLife.com. It's formulated to break up its delivery in three ways, which helps me get through all three periods of hockey. Phase one provides a rapid onset of energy, concentration, alertness, and motivation. By period two, I'm receiving a dose of sustained energy, increased focus, metabolism, cognitive function, performance, and feeling of well-being, which I need with the way I play. In Phase 3, I'm getting fatigue protection without jitters and crash, an elevated mood and a reduction of fluid retention to help me make the big play when it counts. This same triphasic approach helps me when I drink it during work hours or simply just for a pick-me-up when I need it. Try one of the four energy flavors by visiting rockinthatidlife.com, but make sure to email Dustin at rockinthatidlife at gmail.com and tell him Let's Go Blues Radio sent you to receive an additional 10% off your order. That's rockinthatidlife.com. Center Ice Brewery is a beer lover's dream for hockey fans. Based in St. Louis, Missouri, owner Steve Albers has been brewing hockey-themed favorites for thirsty sports fans since 2017. From the Beauty IPA to the Old Arena Lager, a cold, frosty, hockey-themed beer is just what the doctor ordered for hockey fans in St. Louis. Make sure to check your local beer store for Center Ice Brewery beer today. LGB. Let's go beer. During the magical 2019 playoff run, I was in the midst of buying my current home. Every time I spoke with my realtor, obviously, home buying was the discussion. But in the back of my mind, I couldn't stop thinking about what was destined to happen for our St. Louis hockey team. If only there were a realtor who could have walked me through the process, held my hand when needed, but was there to be a sounding board when I wanted to complain about a certain hand pass goal. Let realtor Mike Burgoyne with Real Brokerage be that for you. He'll have your needs top of 
of mind as he skates you through the home buying or selling process, dangling you past any obstacles, and assisting on all your home goals. Check out strikewithmike.com for more information or give him a call directly at 314-753-4060. That's Mike Burgoyne with Real Brokerage at strikewithmike.com and that number again is 314-753-4060. Don't forget to tell Mike that Let's Go Blues Radio sent you. And now, back to Let's Go Blues Radio. The longest. Running St. Louis Blues podcast with Price, Ponder, and Day. I think we lost half our audience because they thought the show was over. (laughs) Yeah, right. Way to go, Austin. Moron. You're fired. Where's producer Amy when you need her? What's I can see Austin. What's this button do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's strike. Hey, maybe if you would, maybe if you would have won a championship on Saturday, you know what the hell mm. you were doing. That is uh, that is strike number two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you get three strikes a season. Four games left. <laughs> he plays gone. He left. He left. He's taking his ball and going home. Ah, he actually did leave. <laughs> Good. We'll All right. finish without him. Yeah. Um, so if you guys had to guess right now, uh, right now we sit 10th. Uh, we kind of briefly went over uh, the, the games the teams around us had left and how many and who they played. Um, we got four left against uh, tough teams. Uh, where do we finish, guys? You, Jeff, you said outside looking in. A 12, 13? I think I think this team I I think even uh I don't know we we were all kind of saying it before the trades this team is a uh destined to be right outside the playoff picture I still think that I think this team I think they get 3 to 4 more points I think that's all they need to get to 12th or 13th mm. Uh I think they uh finish 9th Yeah that's that's what I was going to say I'll take that. Okay. That's at least put you in the talk, put you in the lottery. <laughs> Nine or exactly where they are right now. Nine or ten. Yeah, because uh, let's see. Right now, uh, you said. So you said let's 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 do some math here. Uh, Seventy nine points What's right nine? now, uh, Jeff. You said three or four more points. That you said. Yeah. So at most, uh, say four more points. So eighty three points. Uh, that would mean uh, Ottawa and. Buffalo could only I'm not looking at tiebreakers here could only get two more points in their last uh, let's see Buffalo has six more games Ottawa has four more I mean you know I think anything can happen I came up with this before looking at math but I <laughs> I do think this team's destined to be right outside okay. of the draft lottery All right. I hope I'm wrong okay. I really do I think I think the schedule's tough I think they're gonna uh, fold like a cheap shirt I'm not even sure what that means. That's not even the term. Whatever. It's nice try, cheap though. tent. Cheap yeah. tent. Cheap tent? Is that what it means? Mm-hmm. That, that was, that's the same thing. about tent? it. Tents, tents fall apart easily if they're real cheap. Yeah. Fall like a lawn chair. How's that? Okay. Uh, That'll work. Hmm. Fold like a piece of origami under a skilled Japanese person. The blues are <laughs> 1-0. and oh. In the gold plan. Uh, Adam, I don't know if you saw, I tagged you on Twitter. Uh, somebody was talking about how they need to go to wins after uh, elimination. And I yeah. instantly responded and was like, that is the gold plan. Like, yeah. yes, 100%. <laughs> he he sent me the uh, some details on that, and I keep forgetting to go back and look at them. Sorry about that. Winning Unlimited, sir. One of these days I'll get to it. Uh, uh, Zarenko, uh, backup goalie, uh, was called up uh, Monday uh, to back up Bennington against the Flyers due to an undisclosed injury to Thomas Grice. Um, I think uh, if Grice is out for a bit, um, you see Z- uh, Zarenko would play eventually, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it, yeah. It, season finale? It, season finale, sure. at least. Yeah, yeah. You, you want to get the guy in there. And you know, I don't know if you guys have heard anything about Thomas Grace's injury, but I, I hear he's got a uh, hyperextended left oh. hand, left <laughs> shoulder. Oh wow! Holy, that, that was a visual for you, podcast listeners. <laughs> that was a uh, outstretched like arm high into the air, flat palm down. 
Yes. <laughs> That's <Jeez>. much. <laughs> I'm injured. Uh, oh, Ow. Ow. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Um, Grice with the, you spell his name with SS, right? At the end. Yes, you do. <laughs> you can't Oof. spell Grace without SS. You're right. <laughs> uh, I, I do think there's no point not to start Jarenko, right? Like, see what you got in your goalie yeah. depth. You've already seen if, Hofer. Let's see what Jarenko's else, got. Put those beautiful pads on the uh, NHL ice. Yeah. Assuming he's yeah. still wearing them. God, those are. He, he did. Uh, he had them, he had them uh, pregame. Yeah, warm-ups. they're beauts. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, Matt Harris says Grice's injury was an- actually announced as holy fuck why don't you play defense in front of me fuck this shit I'm out uh, I do believe that's uh, upper body right yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah right that's upper body that's, that's out the mouth so upper body <laughs> right. yeah <laughs> uh, out the mouth and the head right yeah yeah he uh, he uh, got hung out to dry but looked pretty awful in Nashville yeah yeah uh, thank that- god we didn't go to that you know what? Austin said that. And yeah. um, and my first reaction was kind of the same thing, but only for a second. So I was like, you know what? The Blues aren't playing for anything except for lottery position, which so that helped them. Um, so it really wouldn't have been, you know, it would have been like a footnote in the trip. You know, it would have. It would have been an easy thing to forget. Yeah, but I you mean, know? at the same time, like last night we went to the game and we were talking to the guys in front of me and, you know, they, they were like, I, well, I said – because uh, they, they made some comment like, oh, you know, if they lose, it's actually better. And I'm like, well, yeah, but I'm like, I actually, and this is during the third period, almost collapse. And I was like, yeah, but I paid for tickets. I'm here. I want to see a win. And they were like, well, we didn't pay for our tickets. <laughs> uh, oh, so you guys can sit <laughs> yeah. there and for a loss. I'm cool with that. Yeah, and you're there with your son, right? So right. it's like yep. you want to cool a cooler experience right well, wins a better atmosphere um oh, yeah. I, I and i i totally get it if if i would have been there with my daughter um we she wants she doesn't care about the lottery position she wants to see the team win right and she gets excited and i'm like i want i would want them to win for her you know most the whole way back to the car all i heard was we won yeah and i was like yeah we yeah. did see that's cool <laughs> i mean that's yep that's what it's all about at this point of the season. I mean, uh, that, that, that's just one of a hundred reasons why I'm I'm on board with just winning and and not uh, not tanking and wanting to miss the playoffs if we were close. Right. That kind of a thing. So, right. Um, well, like I said earlier, like this is the roster going forward for the most part. So you still want to see them compete. If they're getting blown out yeah. every game, like the Nashville game, well, you're like. What the fuck are we even hoping we have a team here for next year? You're like, looking, good Lord. yeah, you're looking for st- st- you're looking f- for things to look forward to for next season, right? Yeah. It's like, oh wow, because you've got you know Verona and Kapanen, uh, Blay, uh, new acquisitions, so you can see how they're f- fitting in. They're fitting in great. Um, you want to see that keep going. You don't want to see that like fizzle out, right? You want to see them finish strong. So, uh, and, and you don't like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, losing sucks, and losing kind of is infectious. You see that with some teams in the NHL that they just like they have. You don't want to just get in a, a, a habit of losing, and you get some of these new guys in here with neighbors. Uh, for example, you don't want him to have just him just experience losing, and uh, you know you want him to experience winning to some you know a, a team that's going somewhere and have confidence and optimism for next season. So. I think there's a lot to look forward to. I think, um, uh, but you say this is the roster more or less for next season, probably, but I hope they can make some changes somehow. Um, Everyone hopes they can do something on defense with one of the NTCs, right? You hope they buy out Scandella, maybe, um, because it would actually be a very affordable buyout and they could get out from underneath his. Um, And they, you know, or, or, or maybe someone wants to, trade for Krug and Krug will go somewhere, something like that. I don't know. Um, I think that's a big reason. And, and again, we don't know for sure. We All we kept hearing is Krug would go back to Boston, right? That's all we keep hearing. That's the thing. That's part of the reason you hope for a Boston collapse in the playoffs. 
That's the only reason they go out and get maybe yeah. another high price player. And they want, and it seems like, oh my gosh, uh, we were lacking uh, a puck moving defenseman, yeah. mm-hmm. a power play quarterback in the playoffs. Ooh, crew. Yeah. Would you want to come back? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I, I think Dmitry Orlov would have to fall flat on his face. He's, he's looked yeah. really good right. since going to Boston. So, mm-hmm. uh, it was announced Tuesday that, uh, Scandella will miss the remainder of the season after blocking a shot in the second period against the Predators on Saturday. He uh, left the game and didn't return. He had missed the first half of the season recovering from a hip injury. He played in 20 games this season, netting one goal, one assist, and a minus two rating. And the Blues have recalled defenseman Matt Kessel from the Springfield Thunderbirds under emergency conditions. Uh, Kessel did play in the shootout loss to Boston and the uh, win versus Philadelphia and averaged just over 15 minutes of ice time and was a minus one total. Um, he's 22 years old and was drafted by the Blues in the fifth round, uh, number 150 overall of the 2020 draft. Um, this season, the uh, F- uh, Phoenix, Arizona native leads the Thunderbirds defense with uh, 31 points, five goals, 26 assists through 66 games. Overall, Kessel has totaled 34 points, five goals, 29 assists, and 72 penalty minutes in 81 career AHL appearances. Uh, what did you guys think of uh, Kessel uh, last couple of games? He wasn't noticeable. I agree. Which is exactly what yeah. you want. I agree. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Unlike Tyler Tucker, who was inserting himself everywhere, Kessel was, you know, he, he was, you know, just playing playing a role. And uh yeah, it it's uh it, it took me a while to realize he was in the game last night. <laughs> me too. Actually. Even yeah, me too. I, I was there. And I'm like I'm l- literally actively looking for his number every time there's a line change. I'm like why am I not seeing him? And finally I started to see him. I'm like, okay, there he is. And yeah, I, I don't know. Even, even with offensive defensemen, when they first come into the league, I don't want to see you like that sounds awful, but I don't want to notice you because I feel like unless you are just doing incredible Sidney Crosby like stuff, I don't want to see you on the rink. I want to be like, wait a minute. Kessel played tonight. And that's exactly who I was the last two games because that means he did his job. Yeah, and and a lot of times with defense, uh, you know, when you notice them, it's usually because of something bad they did. Um, but I, I, I mean, I guess there's there's three ways to look at it. You don't want to notice him at all. If you do notice him, you want it to be because he's making nice plays, uh, or you notice him because he's fucking up. That's yep. That's the three scenarios. And I found that with defensemen, it's typically if you notice them, it's the latter. It's because they fucked up and they made a bad play. With younger Nico Mikola. Yeah. Yes. With third pairing defenseman, yes. Right. I mean uh Semarokov, another one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We noticed yes. him his first game and he wasn't even a blue. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And we remembered him. We, we noticed him so much we went out and got him. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's uh, I, I was watching the uh, the Rangers game the other night, and it was like within two minutes, Nico Mikola, or within, I guess, two minutes of me turning on, he gets a penalty, and a couple minutes later, he gets out of the box, gets another penalty. Like, yeah, yeah uh, we watched that for a couple of years here. <laughs> so, mm. Mm. Uh, The uh, Flyers and Blues played on Tuesday night, which was... Pride night in St. Louis. Uh, Mr. Jeff Ponder, we mentioned, uh, was in attendance uh, with his son in this game. Uh, was your wife there too, or was it just you and your boy? Yeah, I know. He, she was there. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we had, I don't know if I mentioned on the show, we had tickets to the Build a Bear night yep. uh, a couple weeks ago, but I ended up getting the flu, so we couldn't go. So I felt awful because I kept telling him all week, we're going to the Blues game on Sunday. Can't wait. Can't wait. No, we're not going. And so I decided. Uh, just go ahead and get three tickets so the three of us could go. Um, and, uh, yeah, unbelievable time. We had such a good time. He, uh, I told him last night because, you know, we took, him, we took him to a game last year. We took him to a preseason game, too. What do you got there? He's got the, uh, the sunlight from uh, uh, Sun, King. Sun King Brewery. Nice. Out of uh, Indianapolis. Okay. I've been to their brewery. Very nice. Mm. Very, very good. I've been to their brewery. It's, where'd you get that, Bill? Um, uh, Friar Talk, actually. Okay. I, I did see it. They had it at um, uh, Pete's for a while um, yeah. in Troy, and I and I went back there, and I couldn't find it. So Friar Talk does have it. That's good to know. Yes. So, yeah, so 
we went to the game and, and had a blast. And I told him last night, I'm like, we are taking you to more sporting events because he's actually gotten into baseball now, too. So we'll take him to some Cardinals games this summer. And, uh, you know, he was a little whiny a little bit last year. Uh, the most whiny thing he did was when there was a Blues goal, he would do this. Huh. But I, it would only last maybe, and, and for podcasters, he's putting his hands over his ears. And he would do it for about two seconds, and then he'd stop, and he'd start clapping and go, yay! And so I'm <laughs> like, yeah, that's that's the right reaction. So he's uh, he was a blast, had a great time. Can't wait to take him to more games. Uh, mentioned that this was Pride Night uh, in St. Louis. Uh, we'll get into more of that um, in a second. Uh, Bennington was back in net for the Blues and stopped 32 of 34. Uh, Cairo, uh, goal scores for the Blues were Cairo his 37th, Pitlick his 6th, Falk his 11th, and Torpchenko his 9th. Um, Torpchenko had nine goals this season. That's um, I've I've liked him on the fourth line. Nine goals. I think that's probably more than people expected out of him. That's nice. Um, I I think coming into this season uh, after the shoulder injury he had, I think people were optimistic. Uh, you know, shoulder injury was standing. Um, I've I've liked him this season. I think he's he's actually gotten better as the season went along. Um, happy with him on the fourth line. I I don't know if you guys uh, uh fans or his yeah I we're I'm gonna get to your I'm gonna I'm, I feel like a a bad interview. I'm gonna get to your question, Kurt. But let me just uh, <laughs> let me answer uh, that reference. by asking you this. No, Lawrence <laughs> Frazier here asks, will your shows continue throughout the entire NHL playoffs, the NHL draft, and then NHL free agency? Yes, we do all summer. Uh, it's a little different over the summer. Typically, it's just me and maybe a guest or so. Kurt and Bill like to join here and there. They typically join for the draft show, the free agency show. Uh, any big news, we'll have a show. If we do a, a, if we play a game and commentary and stuff like that, we'll... Like special yeah, shows. we do uh, we do mystery hockey theater, which yeah. is fun. We'll watch an old Blues game live, like so you can tune in and watch with us, and we'll comment throughout the, the game. Um, so we do a lot of fun stuff. We got a fun summer planned with uh, doing a Blues all time team. Um, so just want to comment to you there. Yes, so I think next week we'll have another regular show like this, and then the week after will probably be our season recap show. And then after that, we'll start summer shows. So, yes, we will be around all the time. You can't get rid of us. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, but, but as Matt Harris points out, only if you say please. Yes. Lawrence, <laughs> I expect a please here. Once you do that, we will we will continue on with the rest of the shows. Uh, but it, your question, Kurt, about Torpchenko. Yeah. Dude, he – I love him. As yeah. a fourth liner, yeah. fucking A. Yeah. Give me a fourth line of Torpchenko's. He he four checks. He, he, he's got hands. We saw him on the first line a couple weeks ago with uh, Kyrun Thomas. I, he's not Barbashev, but he's pretty damn close to Barbashev. Yeah, I, I think you he, give him a couple more years of experience, he's right there. I think he grows into that role nicely, actually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I was hopeful when he first came up uh, that he could possibly be um, an, another. Um, oh shit, uh, Nuchuskin, right? Same size, same. St- Speed. When he gets up to top speed, you can't stop the guy. He just he's not at definitely not same skill level uh, as New Chuskin. Um but yeah, it, there are two guys on this team that I am really, really pulling to get to ten goals, and that's Torpchenko and Blay. Yeah. Can you imagine Sammy Blay scoring two goals tomorrow night against the Rangers? Oh, oh, oh yeah, I, I Completely didn't even think Look about that. Look to my veins. Oh, my God. He's, right he's got to score against him, doesn't he? At least oh. once. Oh, would God. you not shit your pants? <laughs> that, that would be so fucking amazing. Uh, <laughs> I, I, that's, so that's, that and is and like, hold Tarasenko are, scoreless, right? Yes. So Those are, those are like the, four, four individual player goals. That's, when I, that's what I want to see uh, for the rest of the season. Uh, get both those guys to 10. Because Blay Blay will have done it in twenty games. You will have done it only as a St. Louis Blue. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> I love it. It it's just it's that sports man. Sports are weird, crazy. Um, How many people? Show me an advanced stat that could have predicted that. We don't know. We don't know what what the future holds for Sammy Blay. But how many NHL forwards can say? 
yeah, I scored all my goals with one team. Uh, but I also played for another team for like two seasons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you score like one or two goals? No, I had like 30. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> uh, it was Kairou's, uh sixth goal in his last six games. Uh, he scored the first goal of the game, his 37th of the season. And uh, I guess they do want him to get to 40. That'd be nice. Oh, yeah. My previous that comment. would be nice. Um, I think, I don't think it matters. Well, if he scores 40, that's a nice, solid. Uh, Puts him it, right up there with Tony McKegney. <laughs> oh, my. Well, it's a nice, solid number uh, that may <laughs> shut some people up about Kairou's lack of defense, about how that's like a, a problem for people. What does it say? Matt Harris, Sammy Blake cuts through the Rangers legends, Vladdy Tarasenko and Petty Kane to score a Hattie with his dick out. <laughs> Comment on the show. That's uh, that's something out of Slapshot, right? <laughs> it's it's the Joe Thornton, right? The visual <laughs> yeah. of that, right? <laughs> the visual of that is I can't. I can't not get it out of my head. Oh my gosh! <laughs> just, just say, yeah, boys, yeah. Uh, just wearing a sock. <laughs> uh, so it was. Oh, that's good. It was three to nothing. Blues heading in the third period. Uh, the floor Flyers did pour it on in the third, uh, sending eighteen shots on net. Bennington did stop sixteen of those. Uh, Flyers scored two in the third. To cut the Blues lead to three to two, the first came at uh, five fifty one from James Van Riemsdyk, and the second came from Morgan Frost, his nineteenth of the season at eleven forty three. Morgan Frost uh, was acquired by the Flyers. They drafted him using one of the first round draft picks they acquired from the Blues in the Braden Shen trade. Um, Terrible but- trade. They should have never. <laughs> Blues should have never done it. The other I mean, play- Morgan Frost has clearly proven that he is better than Braden Shen. <laughs> <laughs> the other player the uh, Flyers drafted with the pick they got from the Blues was uh, uh, Joel Farabee at 14th overall in the 2018 entry draft. Uh, Frost was picked 27th overall in 2017 by Philadelphia and is having a, a nice breakout season, especially lately. Um, he's got 19 goals, 24 assists, 43 points. He's a minus 11. Averages 16, 13 uh, time on ice. Uh, his, his Frost's fifth goal and seventh point in his last five games. So he's heating up after only netting three goals and three assists and in the first 27 games played this season. He has 16 goals, 21 assists, and 37 points in his forty nine in his last 49 games played. Frost has 26 goals, 40 assists, and 153 games played in his career so far. All right, and crazy question. I'm sure you guys will not know the answer. What is Morgan Frost's nickname? Uh, Frost. It's got to be... He's a hockey player. What's his nickname? David Frosty. David Frosty. David. It's Frosty. Should be David. David. <laughs> yes. Randomly, it's just David. No, but David Frost. David, David Frost. Frost. I know. I get. It. <laughs> Why not just no. call him Dan? Dan. Uh, yeah. Dan. For those. Yeah. There you go. Does any? I guess. I guess that's been a while now. There are probably a lot of younger fans that don't really know the Mike Danton, David Frost story, like they should. Right. Uh, listen to the Andy Strickland episode we had a couple of years ago. We talked about that. Yeah, that you know, a couple was... years from now, when we've completely run out of summer show ideas for you. You need to track down that uh, the guy volleyball was... player. Oh, <laughs> what's it? The the uh, the the guy that was the dispatcher for the Columbia Police Department that broke that whole thing. Oh, right. he's the one that is like couldn't keep the secret. Oh yeah, that I. Was... Can you imagine us having a show back then when that happened? Oh, oh my god. That I mean that was so, that was that's a whole cuz that happened right when the blues were eliminated. That right, yeah. was a whole summer's worth of shows. I was going to say that would have been our summer series. Yeah. Right. We, we probably trial. we could have probably like, you know, gone off the rails and, you know, been like an influencer podcast for like serial and all the true crime podcasts. It's, I remember doing I remember doing a lot of research online and getting the PDF of the police report uh from that night, um uh, finding it online. Um and it was crazy reading through that thing. That was just that was that's one of the biggest soap opera uh, moments uh, the Blues have had in the past, what, 25 years, 20 years? 
That's that was I mean nuts. And there's yeah. there's a documentary on it on YouTube, I think. Oh yeah. Um, maybe a three part series, something like that. Two part series. So interesting and crazy, scary, creepy. David Frost, man, creepy guy. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> So, uh, so we got a question uh, earlier here. Um, see if I can find it. Oh, Lawrence again. Lawrence Frazier of says, Arabia. Oh. Who would you give the <laughs> yes, Lawrence of Lawrence of Frazier? Frazier. <laughs> Lawrence of Frazier. Uh, who would you give the captaincy to right now, and what alternates? Honestly, I know that this is a long shot, but I'm thinking you have a captain next year in Ryan O'Reilly. Oh wow! I really think <laughs> he's coming back. I really do, you, do. I think he wants to. I think he would. I don't know if we can. I don't know if we can fit him in. I think you fit him in at five million. It depends if they can move. I mean, I mean, okay. I, I mean, think he comes back. Okay, I really do. And I, 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 I'm completely. There's no insider information here. It just seemed like the way that went down. How he talked before he left. He would love to stay here. I think. And I think it was literally a handshake moment, like we saw with Kachuk and Doug Waite. Hey, we're gonna move you because we'll get assets. He said something about how he wants to stay here if they can still win. I think it's literally Armstrong telling him we have a better chance of winning if we trade you and get assets for you and then re-sign you. And I think that's gonna be the case. I I would love that. I really would. Um if we can work that out. But if it doesn't happen, I think Shen's the popular choice. I like Shen as captain. Um, I think Thomas is a is a alternate, and do you go Pareko? I mean, I you, you I mean, I'm I just saying you, you you go all forwards. I you got to throw a defenseman in there. You have yeah. to have a defenseman, Falk. but I don't think it's, I'd yeah, go it's Falk. Falk. Falk, yeah, I think it's Falk. Falk. Yeah, Pareko to me. I mean, they're gonna go with what like how teams do it now. Twenty seven alternates. <laughs> um, drives me crazy. It I know. should be one captain oh, and two yeah. alternates. But... Uh, different alternates for home and road. I hate that. Yeah, fuck yeah. off. That's so that. stupid. Yeah, but I think if you mm. say one captain, two alternates, I think it's Shen, Falk. Oh boy, I mean Thomas makes sense, but I don't see him as a leader. Maybe Buchnevich. Ooh, is Bushnevich the leader? That, I, I, okay, I think they're grooming Thomas to be that leader. He's always right. being interviewed. That's why he's already got the A. Yeah, he, he's and got he's the worn A. The they're a. not going to take it away now. He's worn the A. I, and he's always – he's. I think he's said more in front of the cameras than almost any other player on the team. Um, even when O'Reilly was here, he was talking so much. Um, yeah, Bennington maybe – Benton some yeah, too, but, yeah. But yeah, you're but not. You're Thomas not was. Give, you're not going to Luongo. Um, no. Give him, give him a, Thomas a, was surprisingly in front of the camera a lot more than I expected him to be. So that's I don't know. I, there's something there with him. They're trying to put him front and center, and maybe roughly, roughly so. Yeah. No. It, 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 Kyra's definitely not. Doesn't have leadership material. Yeah, no. He's he's just let him he's play. The offensive star. Just right? let him play. Yeah. Don't don't try to put any responsibility on that guy. <laughs> right. right. He, can't he, he can barely handle the responsibilities on both ends of the ice as it is. Right. Um. Yeah. I think that's fair. I think that's uh, uh Shen, uh, Thomas and Falk, I, uh, of this roster. Now, if O'Reilly's back, then it's O'Reilly. Shen Falk, Riley Shen Thomas, or Riley Thomas Falk. Winning you unlimited gotta Shen asked the over. question. Winning unlimited asked the question. O'Reilly return with a Shen captaincy. That would be interesting. I, I almost wish they'd assigned a captain after O'Reilly left. Really? Yeah, they should have. Right, right. That that's the. I think that's the only scenario in which Shen would be captain. Right. If the, if they roll him out the last three games, like they they come out tomorrow and say, hey, uh, Shen's going to wear the C the rest of the year. He's our captain going forward. Then if O'Reilly comes back, you don't give it to him. It's, it's right? such a – yeah. It's an easy again, decision, you gotta too. Wonder, you got to wonder if it was the handshake deal of True. we'll bring you back next year. But, you're still our captain. Yeah, but the Blues have done this kind of thing before. They don't assign a captain for whatever reason. Uh, when uh, Dallas Drake, uh, it's out of out of uh, respect to Dallas Drake, they didn't assign a captain after he – what was it? After what happened there with that? He He – uh, 
was hurt, retired or something? Didn't didn't No, he it? went to no, Detroit. He tra- you traded. To That's Detroit. right. Traded. traded. No, he, he got fucking bought out because he was awful. That's right. And then they fucking – he signed yes. in Detroit, and they said, out of respect of Dallas Drake, who we just bought out, fuck off. That was so I know. I, I, that, 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 that's like Blues back then used to piss me off so much. <laughs> they didn't make sense. They were contradictory. You bought the dude out. Out of respect to the player, you don't buy him out. <laughs> I wonder um, – well, let's uh, – Matt Harris says that Rob Rob Tom just has the face of the modern NHL. Dude looks like a headliner. Uh, kind of agree there. Um, it, I, interesting that at two times this season you've had Thomas kind of disagree right with uh, what Brube said about the team that one time right, and then just the other game you had Brube chewing out Cairo as the after the first period ended. Did you guys you saw that right? Yeah, so that was and interesting. Kyrou gave it back to him. Well, yeah, he did. Yeah, and it was it was about line changes. I, b- I believe I said it was about uh, making uh, quick and efficient line changes. Um, apparently, Kyrou was didn't feel like he. Uh, Kyrou dogs it. Yeah. going to the bench. Yeah. Now, I think ninety five percent of NHL players dog it. So I'm not just going to right. bash Kyrou. In- but yeah, he definitely. I've never seen him hustle to the bench. Right, a uh, uh, pretty one-dimensional player like Kairou, younger, it, you know, doesn't have that leadership uh, trait on a team that's eliminated from the playoffs. The writing's been on the wall. Yeah, you know, I don't think in that game, um, you know, the Blues have been eliminated. That was the Nashville game, right? That they got into the the the, the drawing thing. Um, yes. So. It, it's just it. It's you know it. It's I'm not surprised by that interaction whatsoever, um, and and I'm not surprised by Kairu not giving it his all to make a line change in a throwaway game that late in the season. Justin Scott says, uh, to be honest, if the Blues do the right things this off season, they can be in the playoffs next season. I believe in this team, and if Verona and Kapanen can continue to play well, they'll be steals. Um, I like your optimism. I'm I'm there with you. I think they can, uh, with a couple of tweaks, they can be in the, back in the playoffs. I think um, this team was a victim of some poor, historically poor, defensive play, and yes. uh, and some inconsistent, some really inconsistent play from the forwards the first half of the season. Um, that. Just then, the Blues they, they Blues couldn't keep the puck out of the net, and uh, they couldn't outscore the opponent. So, uh, offense has looked much better lately. Um, defense a little, I guess maybe, but um, they almost have to do something. And we've talked about this to death. They almost have to do something defensively significant um, for me to get excited about. Going somewhere in the playoffs, you know. I, I agree. I I, 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 I think they can, even, they can totally them, be a playoff team next season. I'm not going to say they won't. They could easily be one with a tweak this off season. But how how good of a playoff team? That depends on some defensive moves. I think I'll take yeah. your commentary a little bit further and say I don't think they're a playoff team without a defensive move. I think you have to make at least one significant defensive move. If if you're literally like this is our defense for the next four years or whatever it is to let these contracts up. They're not in the playoffs. I think they're well, just not. Their defense is that bad. If that, well, but, if that defensive but, move is a new coach, then right. Ryan. That's if the new coach, I new hope. system, new coach, new system. And you get, I don't know. I mean, maybe I, I think so much of it depends on Pareko. And we were so, you know, we we want we want the Pareko whisperer. We want Bowmeister, right? We want the guy that can tell him how to play. And we thought we had that when Scandella first came here. We thought we had that when when Letty first came here. I think Pareko's got to show that he can do something on his own next year. And he's he, since since the you know the the sell off, um, Pareko's been up and down. Um, he mostly but, good, 
mostly, mostly good. good. I mean, uh, but look, he still had his at, issues. Right. Look at look at that game in Boston or, or against Boston. That the the Cairo the first Cairo goal, right? That was all Pareko, knowing right when to join the rush, going up, pushing the defense back, and opening up that lane. It was it was vintage Pareko, and if he can play like that on. But not suck so much on the defensive end. Was, was it the uh, Nashville game? The god awful turnover. Oh god! Yeah, the, the so. pass in the yeah. end zone that was just yeah. blind, and it looked like it looked it looked like a uh, St. Louis City SC was out there getting a, a, a back pass. <laughs> yeah, one of their, right? Yeah, and they were yeah, scoring a goal off that. It was uh, it went right to Klaus. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Klaus yeah, right. comes in Klaus, and scores. Klaus, on, Klaus buried on it. Grice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Klaus in, scores on in, Grice. Yeah. <laughs> in Pareko's defense, he uh, he is a, a, a huge Tim McGraw fan and just wanted to hear that song again. That's what it was. <laughs> yep. No, I uh, um, I let's put it like this: if so, the blue season's over eight days from now. If in nine days Mike Van Ryan still has a job with the Blues, they're not back in the playoffs next year. I'll just put it like that. Well, that should be the, your first fucking move next Friday. If Mike Van Ryan still has a job, you have failed this offseason. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not going to put a timeline. No point in keeping him around. I'm not going to put a timeline on it, but I, I, I'm I, with you that Van Ryan has, but has to be gone. Typically, right. when you know you're firing a coach, it's right as the season ends. Right. Within yeah, within a few days, you would think. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm with you. Uh, I, I, I think that needs to happen. Uh, we've talked about that at length. Um, I think – we were saying that before. It was cool to say that. Honestly, uh, I think uh, you brought it up first, Jeff. I think I believe about firing Van Ryan. Um, I won't take credit. It was all of us. It's part of this show. We all just have such a good group. Thing. <laughs> it's a team effort. That's right. Um, but yeah, I, and that if you don't get rid of Van Ryan, then what are you doing? Because unless unless you've got plans uh, that where you can you know, uh, retool the defense and maybe you want to go with a retooled defense with Van Ryan as the, uh, either or they have to do one or the other, but I, I don't see that working I, either. Well, I, I'm, I'm not I'm already not. seen Van Ryan fail. Even in the cup year, he failed. What's the point in keeping him around in the cup year? They were, they were good defensively because Larry Robinson well, stepped in and took over the D <laughs> right. right. Like he's <laughs> never been good as a blues defensive coach. No. I don't, and, it would make no sense to keep him around. Right. But what I'm saying is is that it would be something they'd be doing. To, now, to their credit, they have they have made moves on defense. They've tried different things um, with Scandella, with Letty. You know, they brought in Falk they, they, uh, uh, in preparation for uh, potential, maybe leaving. They brought in Krug after potential did leave. Um, they're, they're fluid. They've been fluid with the defense, but it seems like it's harder to be fluid now with all the no trade clauses kind of bottlenecking it up. So it, it always they, it always comes down to that, right? That it's the no trade clauses that are always like stopping any type of progress they want to make with the defense. Right. It's as if they poured all that fluid straight out. <laughs> Yeah, right. There's with a, those no a, movement clauses. There's an oil leak. Yes. <laughs> We've been leaking transmission fluid for the last 40 miles. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, so uh, Blues got the loss. Uh, Blues got the win, four to two, um, against Philadelphia. They hung on, uh, got the antenna from Ter- Ter- Tropchenko. Um, it was Pride Night. So uh, Jeff and you were there. So they and, and the the what the headlines are for every team now. It's not about mm. having Pride Night. It's about what's not. Uh, existing at Pride Night now. That's that's the headline. That's the story. It's all negative. So, and the Blues did the same thing. Other teams are doing. None of them wore the Pride warm up jerseys, but they did do the tape, the Pride tape on the sticks in warm ups, and they did do uh, Pride pucks. So, well, a cu- couple of things. You say everybody's doing as much as I hate to say it. Credit well, goes to the Nashville Predators. Nashville Predators. San Jose did it. Kind of they right. They did it without Rhymer. Right. Yes. They did. They still did it. They did it yep. right. That, that's the that that's you can't force. You're not going to force a player to wear that if they don't want to. Fine. But they did it. They did it right after that. Right. 
Uh, and I agree with you. Nashville did it right. Um, some teams did it right, but some teams. But the head, the, the headlines are the teams that are doing this. Uh, you know, <clears throat> taking away the biggest visual element of of uh, Pride Nights, which is the warm up jerseys. Um, so what did, what other what did you notice that was there at Pride Night? So besides the tape and besides the puck, which I want to get into the sticks, uh, the tape, and the pucks in a second. But um, what else was going on? They had some. They said they had some pride uh, themed things on the jumbotron and the ribbon boards. Um, I mean, you know, just like had, snippets. They had. Um, well, I've drawn a blank on his name, Andy Cohen. They had him on for a nice. brief second, which was cool. I love Andy Cohen. I did hear um, a RuPaul song on the on the TV broadcast. Yeah, they had a little bit of that. Um, you know, I went last year. And they they like flashed the Blues Pride um, uh, logo with the Pride colors. They'd flash that on like every break. You know the the ribbons around were all Pride colors. They didn't do any of that this year. Wow. Uh, there was none of that. Um, the so the pucks, the mystery pucks that they give away every year uh, or every game, uh, those were Pride. So that was nice. I did like that signed pucks. Um, they uh yeah they they really did do much. They, were, to they be did honest. say the, the lights around the arena like outside those were those were pride colors. So was the wheel, the Ferris wheel was pride colors too. Yeah, Ferris wheel was um they Yeah, they you know and they had like every now and then they they interview a member of the LGBT uh L- LGBTQ community um talk about how important pride was to them but I don't know. It wasn't that noticeable. It felt like, I don't know. It didn't feel that different of a normal game. Like uh, on the scoreboard, the the Blues logo all night was the Pride logo. I'll give credit on that. Um, but overall, it really didn't feel that different See, that's, of a game. That's interesting because I was there during wrestling night, right? And you could tell it was wrestling night. You, I mean, it was... I mean, they had Ric Flair come out, you know, on the ice and address the crowd. Um, they played all kinds of wrestling montages and things in between periods and, and stoppages, and um, the amount of wooing was um, was beyond tolerable. <laughs> um, but so you knew that it was it was wrestling night. It was evident, right? Um, it's interesting to me that that it w- maybe it wasn't so much the case with. With Pride Night, and now they did say that there was they had some tables uh, upstairs, the concourse area with some pamphlets and informational things to about uh, uh, about that might have just been me not paying attention. No, I didn't no, notice. Yeah, that. and and that's and that's something you have to actually go seek out, right? It's not right. something that you're going to see in your seats. Um, so that's interesting t- to me um, because the Blues did say, where is it here? Um, I thought I had the quote here about what the Blues. Oh, yeah. A source within the Blues organization said the decision not to wear the warm up jerseys was made to put the focus on the positive things the team is doing to support and affirm the LGBTQIA plus community. And I'm not even sure how that makes sense. Uh, to to they they said they're they they didn't wear the jerseys because they wanted to focus on the positive things the team is doing to support the community. And I'm like, why is it one or the other? Why? That makes no sense to me. I, I, it seems like a, a nonsensical fluff comment that doesn't mean anything. You know what I mean? Mm. I, I don't, I don't understand that. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, to that, me. that didn't make sense. Um, again, I, and, and this is something actually friend of the show, Ben Hockman, uh, that I retweeted. Um, so he posted something on how he was disappointed in the Blues not wearing pride jerseys. And somebody said, you know, why should they... Something about why should players be forced to wear something they're not comfortable with. And he just said something along the lines of, you know, why not show that hockey's inclusive and that people, you know, that we support anybody playing the sport? Why is that such a big deal? hundred fucking percent like mm-hmm. this this group of people has felt slighted and marginalized for so long forever forever literally as long as human existence has has been around um 
why not just show a little bit of support? Just, hey, wear a fucking jersey. We all, I mean, think of the crazy ass fucking jerseys we've all worn over the years. I wore a pink Flamingos jersey one year for a team I played for. Were you forced Literally, to wear it giant... because of, uh, you know, Pink Flamingo Night, uh, Jeff? Did you not? No, know? just, you know, fucking, it's a Pink Flamingo. Like, why not? <laughs> I'll wear a fucking pink blue, a, a pink fucking Flamingo jersey. I don't care. Like, why is it? I don't get that. If you're, it, it, and they go back to like, especially like James Reimer's comment too about, you know, oh, hockey is for everyone and I do feel it's inclusive and it should be. Then wear the fucking jersey. Yeah. It's the lowest thing you can do Isn't to support that community. That's funny to me. So, so the the jersey point to me, right? It, it's twofold, right? You get it's the visibility of it, right? Like Kurt said, it is the it it is the, the most visible element, yeah. right? But then you can auction them off for charity. Right? Yeah, twenty I, twenty six thousand right? dollars was raised uh, last year yeah. by auction yep. off the jerseys. So, so it, it's going to be very difficult to raise that amount, that amount of money without people putting in to get a jersey. The team really, the Blues, if they wanted to really do what they say, the, to focus on the positive things the team is doing, they should take the money that was raised last year by the jersey auction, double it, and donate it. That's, yeah. what, that's what they should do. Right. That would have been great. If they're not going to do the jersey. Right, right, exactly. But, Put put yeah. your money where the mouth is. Sure, where your mouth yeah. is. Yep. Sure. Hundred percent. Because because you know, then that then to me that's an amazing gesture uh, by the team. You know, fifty thousand dollars is nothing to billionaire investors of, of the Blues, the owners. That that's they, that's a that's a write off, right? It's a charity donation. Yeah, yep. So um, yep. that that to me would have been something, and but nothing like that was done. That was is reported on anyway. Um, so, yeah. So, Pano, this is, I mean, this isn't on exactly on the topic of, you know, the, the LGBTQ support, but I, I just, I have to ask, you were there. Did they play the U2 song, Pride? Mm, no, I don't believe so. Mm, okay, because, yes, it's, it's, yesterday was April 4th. And that's what that that song's about. It's Pride Night. I don't know. It seems like a missed opportunity if they didn't play it. I could be wrong. Anybody else at the game, correct me. But I don't believe I heard that all night. Again, not connected to the LGBTQ thing. But right. Pride Night, April 4th, seems like the perfect opportunity. So, okay. So the, the Pride tape and the Pride pucks that were used in warm-ups, those were available for players to use. Um, and a number of players did use them. I, I'm I'm just kind of wondering what the difference is, and I and I assume not every player used it, but uh, I'm just wondering what the difference is. I mean, if if you're gonna, you know, if you're a if you're a a player that doesn't want to wear the jersey, but also uses the pride tape and uses the pride pucks in warm up, you know, that's not that different than wearing a jersey. You're 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 out there during the warm-ups where pride is front and center and you're using pride things paraphernalia right to promote pride night um i'm just curious as to why the the tape and this and the pucks were used but not the jerseys by players i don't know i i don't know just, see, just thinking out loud. someone like me to someone like me I don't give a fucking shit about what jersey I put on. I mean, unless it's literally like anti-Semitic, like you got to put this jersey on to show that you hate Jewish people. <clears throat> I'm not doing that. But I mean, come on, like you can't you you can be out there with your teammates who ha- maybe you're not using the pride tape, maybe you're not using the pride pucks. So you see a pride puck, I'm not shooting that. That's <laughs> so stupid. Okay, fine, so whatever. But you, I know, but like, you're okay with going out there with the pride tape. Why not just wear a Jersey for 15 fucking minutes? Because you're just, because you're pushing an agenda, Jeff, you're, you're forcing them, but the pride tape isn't, but it's against their religion, but the pride (laughs) tape isn't, (laughs) well, it It makes no sense. The pride, the pride tape is the same as a Jersey. It's the exact same thing. So one you wear in your, uh, you wear as a jersey, and the other one you put on your stick. It's a, it means the same thing. 
I know. Uh, yeah, and I so and, and and so obviously, you know, and this happens with any team, any sporting team that has a Pride Day and they announce, "Hey, it's we're having a Pride Day," or "Hey, it's actually Pride Day," and they change the logo, and then you look at all the comments right below on social media, which is always a shit show. Now, sometimes usually most of the comments are positive, but you've got a a vocal minority that just blows it up. Right. So, and, you know, and you, you hear, you see things like, like from clueless, you know, people with, with bigoted agendas and, and keyboard warriors, you know, like keyboard, uh, keyboard warriors. warriors. Uh, one, one, one was, uh, one I saw was uh, good for them for, for uh, when they said that they're, the, it was announced the Blues would not be wearing the jerseys, the Pride jerseys. A comment was good for them. I don't understand forcing your beliefs or lifestyle on anyone else, period. I, so many people say this, and they say you're forcing your beliefs on someone else. Nobody's forcing anything on anybody. They're I, asking you to be an ally. Yeah, you're you're asking a, for someone's you're support. Not forcing. It. You're asking for support. You're not forcing. No one's for. Not a single NHL player has been forced against their will to wear a pride jersey that we know of. Not a single one. Well, maybe Eric Stahl. The no, last no, no. year, he last never, year. No, oh, wait. He's, no, he no, 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 no. He's never worn he was one. In Montreal. Well, last year didn't care. Right. He's no, he's never worn one. If you right. ask him. Oh yeah, yeah. There's there's pictures of it, but he's never worn one. Uh, another comment was, "I'm old enough to remember when it was about equality. Now it's wear the jersey or else." Again, no, it's not. Um, another one. Good. No reason to support a sexual fetish. Keep whoever you're sleeping with to yourself. Straight or gay, no one cares. Our society has gotten so freaking weird, man. The the one that, that <laughs> I see, and you guys I know saw this too, the one that says, like, so when straight day? Yeah. And oh. my response is always, uh, the Every other day? 40 fucking games a year at home. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't <laughs> understand. Or, you know, when's straight day? When's Christian day? Which... The Cardinals have the St. Louis Cardinals have a Christian day. Some a lot of teams do have Christian days, by the way. Um, you know, win straight day. That's the that's the dumbest. Uh, I must have missed the headline that said that that showed where straight people were a marginalized group in this country, right? right. And and and, and just, that's that's the fucking <laughs> point that people just don't understand. Like this isn't a let's make sure we have a night for every walk of life. No, it's let's have a night for people who feel that they are not represented well in this sport. And that's what's important is we're making people feel and understand hockey really is for everyone. We know it's for the straight white man, okay? We all know that. Do we really need a night for that? Matt Harris says uh, another quote that is was seen. Stop making sports political. Just let them play. Stop making my existence as a person illegal we've had that argument with somebody on this show with somebody who came in the comments and said why are we talking about politics on this show this isn't fucking politics this is human decency it's, yeah it's, it's a social issue <clears throat> and i i don't know where the whole political thing comes from um at all and you know and then the comparison has been drawn a lot to well if you're not going to you know have your team wear pride jerseys then you shouldn't have it wear have the team wear uh military jerseys or any other special jerseys for can you, and and like i said the backlash from the other side the side that's saying you know don't force your beliefs on somebody else the the, the if 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 a, a player or two were to say i'm not going to wear the military jersey holy shit and th- that would have been you know a completely different issue uh, for them, I'm sure. Um, it's Dude, it's can you, crazy. I, I actually, at this point, if they do it next year, I actually do hope somebody does that next year. And not because I want to slight anyone in the military. I respect every military member fighting for their country. That's incredible. Something I would never do because I'm too much of a pussy. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yes, just I am also for, a pussy. Just just to see the social commentary. Oh, my God. He wouldn't wear that Czech, Czech Republic player wouldn't wear a U.S. military jersey. What a fucking piece of shit. Run him out of the country. I want to see that commentary because of what we're seeing this year. 
you know the Russian players that have said that the it's you know they, they're afraid to they're afraid for their families uh, as as, an, as a reason why they didn't want to wear uh, pride jerseys because it's criminal back in Russia to promote LGBTQ stuff uh, and wear the quote propaganda. Um, but it's okay for and we talked about this before the show. It's okay for them to wear U.S. military gear. Yeah. Uh, especially when the U S and Russia are, you know, everything but at war right now, uh, technically. Yeah. So how is that something that is okay, but pride jerseys aren't, um, for the longest time on Google, one of the, one of the images that came up, I don't think it, it's as apparent anymore. If you just search Vladimir Tarasenko, cause I remember doing this for the show. <clears throat> I'd come out, I'd like try and come up with a, a show image. And I would just search, oh, I, we're talking about Tarasenko tonight. That'll be the show him, something about Tarasenko. It was him in a U.S. military jersey. And I'm like, that was okay with Vladimir Putin? Like, come on. Like, right. no way that's okay. And the LGB, it, the, the the Pride Night jerseys aren't okay. It, and religion's been used in, as an excuse, too. You know, it's against my religion. And uh, that was just on screen. You know, uh, it was Matt Harris said, if you uh, if your political beliefs inhibit your ability to treat people with kindness and love, you are following the wrong political agenda, which is perfectly said. You so many people are seems like they're using religion as an excuse to uh, let their bigotry, you know, flow. So. Uh. Your your cousin Jeff, I, I thought, had one of the best, funniest comments that I've seen in a long time uh, with respect to James Reimer saying you know, saying what he said. You know that he he, he hockey is for everybody. Uh, he you know, but because of his religion, he can't wear it. It's like you know, I'm not I'm not a pagan, but these assholes I hang out with on Sunday are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not the that's, bigot, but my my asshole friends on Sunday are. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. that that sums it up so well for me. Yeah, it's. I mean, I don't. I, I to me, you know, if you support bigoted, uh, oh, and there's a uh, we just put up a. Oh, that's interesting. So uh, that's that's not a military jersey. He's going hunting after the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a uh, 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 uh is uh, war. What year is this? That's a good question. It looks. Re- I mean, he's got it, the gray hair here. Gray it's got to be relatively recent. It's Adidas. So it's not that old. It's Adidas. Yeah. Um, so that's God. The Capitals logo looks like it's photoshopped on there, though. Um, uh, Austin says 2018. Okay. So only yeah, not too long ago, but yeah, Vetchkin's wearing the uh, military camouflage jersey for Washington. And again, that's okay for for Putin's going to look at this and be like, yeah. Good job, Ovi. I love you, bud. But you better not put on that damn pride jersey. No fucking way, man. No way. That's okay. Yeah, I. I mean, <laughs> it's it's so weird and hypocritical, and and it just it's it's odd to me that you you have to ask somebody to be a decent person, and it's and the number of people. That are push that the pushback against that um, again, not the majority. You know, it's the vocal minority uh, people, but this is, but they're they're loud and it's a pushback about being a decent person. You know, um, and I've asked people online before about you know, are are you can, can you condemn bigotry? Are you is that something that you would ever uh, promote, as, or, or you would you always condemn bigotry? And they won't answer it. So I mean, you've and, asked somebody that on this show. Yeah, I did. Do I did. you condemn bigotry? And the answer was basically no. It's not- right, right. Be- you know why it's no? Because it ruins their entire narrative. They can't mm-hmm. say yes. If they say yes, Again. then it undermines everything that they're trying to say, and so they won't say yes. They'll actually come out and say no. I won't condemn bigotry. I think it's okay for people to be bigots. And uh, if you're trying to tell someone that they shouldn't be a bigot that makes you a bigot. You know, if you're right. if you're anti bigots that makes you a bigot. That is the most nonsensical argu- idiotic argument. Um you're not racist if you're against racists. That's not a that's like that's not a thing. Uh, yeah. You that's that's a 
that's a I'm out of bullets in this argument. I'm throwing the gun. That's what I'm doing. Right. It's it's a stupid. Have uh, you hail mary? I don't know thing. if you guys and and Matt. I'm going to say Matt Harris has seen it because uh, we all know gays love musicals. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I'm allowed to say it. I'm allowed to say because I love They're, musicals and I'm not gay. Um, that, that that's not that's not work. <laughs> no, that's exactly, that's totally how it works. I think um, I think uh, I think the a majority. I don't know. There's don't, a don't know, there's, of, of actual people in musicals great, are gay. So there's a great and Andrew Rannells is one of them. Um, he uh, he has a song in uh, a movie called The Prom, uh, which featured um, uh, James Corden. Uh, Corden, I, I can't James Corden, his name right? You like him? Corden. Sorry, I don't oh, go off track. Uh, uh, in this movie, yes. Okay, I don't like him. Uh, no, yeah, okay. Matt Harris, Jeff, my new tattoo is from a musical. <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, I was Jesus. A, I was a Jesus Christ superstar. <laughs> oh, oh, I saw that at the Muni. It's great. You know the best great band name ever? Jesus Christ or Supercar? Uh, yes. All right. <laughs> well, anyway, so there is a great musical called The Prom, and I think I've brought it up on the show before. Andrew Rannells is a guy in that. He has a great singing voice. Um, it's basically long story short. It's about a small town, a girl who's gay who wants to go to her own prom, but she's outcast. Uh, so then these people from like uh, New York, they're all like struggling musical artists. They all travel to the small town and try and like t- change the the point of view from the people in the town. Andrew Rannells is one of them. And he has a song in there called Love Thy Neighbor. And you can look it up on YouTube. It's a great YouTube video, too. But I think you need to see the whole movie for context. And the whole song, the whole number is about how basically, you know, all we all just look at the Bible, people who are religious, look at the Bible and say, pick and choose. Well, it's not okay to be gay, but it's okay that I have a tattoo on my wrist. Uh, yeah, it's not okay to be gay, but my parents are divorced and that's okay. Like, and that's the whole song. And it just really breaks down how, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you fucking do or what anyone else does. At the end of the day, Jesus Christ preached the most important rule I can teach you is to love thy neighbor. And 100% love the person next to you. Don't be a bigot don't be an asshole and that's all we're asking here is to to understand how these people are marginalized and just one night of the nhl season to fucking show some love to them it's it's interesting when when uh religion is used um as an excuse for whatever uh, however you're acting uh that's bigotry or whatever and it's it, the love thy neighbor is like the farthest thing from what they're doing. You know what I mean? It's that's it, so weird to me. I don't know. Um, you know, if 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 you're religious, that's great. That's fine. I, I I know a lot of people who are, and it makes them feel good. They like going to church. They love the community. That's great. Um, it's not something I partake in necessarily, but. Um, you know, to each their own with that. But yeah, I've, it, it's interesting how uh, there's a lot of picking and choosing going on with, uh, with uh, things that people will uh, abide by as far as their religion goes. Um, a lot of, a lot of hypocrisy in uh, what people say about religion too. It's just, you know, I, I'm a, I can't do this because my religion says no, you know, yeah, but you know, I, I sleep around <laughs> uh, on my wife. So that's, that's yeah, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, moving on. <clears throat> Next up for the Blues, Thursday versus the Rangers, 7 p.m. Uh, I thought this said Tarasenko's mom. <laughs> Tarasenko's mom returns. It says yes. Tarasenko's and Mikola's return. It just looks like Tarasenko's mom if I glance over real quick. Um, so they will and return. We're the only four that understand that. <laughs> <laughs> Our listeners are like, what are you looking at? <laughs> yeah, right. It's an outline. Uh, I think I have an idea for a shirt uh, for the shop. I'm gonna put in there. Uh, all Do it you says expand on that. All it says is uh, wear the jersey and have it in rainbow uh, stripes. Ooh, I like. Yes, do that. I'll buy one. I'll buy. I'll buy ten. Wear no, the jersey. Twenty. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
Wear that's, the jersey. That that's a good idea. Simple. Well, real quick, while we're on the subject of shirts, I did want to point out. You know, oh I wanna, yeah, I want to throw oh. some. Throw stand, some stand up, Bill. There you go. Uh, there you go. Oh, I've seen that shirt online. Yes, Cahokia I got Ice it. Rank. The Cahokia Ice Rink, the Chain Link Rink, <laughs> as I have uh, called it in the past, is uh, this T-shirt captures it very well. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I uh, where'd you get that? I've I've seen it before. Yeah. Uh, Ponder put it. Uh, Ponder sent it to us on Facebook yeah. again. Reminded me that it's there. Heritage Apparel STL. They have. Yep. They have some other really great shirts. Yep. Um, they have uh, Joseph versus Shovel Day, uh, January 21st, 1993. Um, they also I have, have that Monday one. Night Miracle shirt. So yep. uh, check them out on Facebook. Um, real quick, really, really great turnaround on this. Um, I, I ordered this, uh, I think, Sunday night at midnight as I was wrapping up work. And uh, it, it showed up today just in time for the show. That's so. cool. Yeah, I, uh, Check I, that, that Joseph Shovel Day one, it looks like a fight night shirt. Like if yes. you see the promos for, oh, cool. yes. you know, uh, I'm trying to think of boxers, McGregor versus whoever, like, you know, this day at this time at this arena, you know, and like, that's what that shirt looks like. And it's beautiful. And I saw it. And I'm like, yep, I don't care if that costs $80. I'm buying it. Yeah. It did not cost eighty dollars. No, it's it's <laughs> a for uh, for a niche uh, hockey T shirt. Very very reasonable. Yep. Totally do it. Yep. I I think everybody who has ever gotten their their jersey stuck in that chain link, <laughs> you need to go out and buy this T shirt. <laughs> uh, I remember uh, playing out there. We rented the thing out, um, and it uh, it was snowing freaking blizzard and uh yeah. it snowed horizontal and it was it, it uh, uh down in the corners was yeah. uh snow banks <laughs> actually yep. on the rink <laughs> yep and uh we we didn't have ice girls no no, no. did not we, we did we didn't have uh, uh austin's favorite ginger to come out and that was a that scrape was, the corners that was a crazy <laughs> night it was it was a late rental because that's when you had to do it and uh, yeah, yeah driving out there was like 15 miles an hour that it was wasn't the, the night that I opened your brother up for 15 mm, stitches, was it? No. It was a different night. It was a different night. This was the first time we rented it out, yeah. Because yeah. the second time, uh, that was in the first, like, five minutes that yep. happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And that was, like, uh, we, uh, Keith and Christie is, like, one of their first – They, they first were dates, early, right? early on. Yeah, very, dating. Very. Yeah, now they're married with right. uh, 14 kids, I think. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're challenging the Dugers at this point. <laughs> Dr. Mom. Oh, what is that? It keeps hitting the mic. Is that you, Bill? That, that was me. Mic? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I just keep hearing the t- clang, clang. Yeah, sorry. Uh, my, I, my watch is finally charged. <laughs> okay, is good that, to know. Is, is that the this the notification sound? The yes. the, this? <laughs> ding, ding. Ding. No, it's it was right underneath the, the thing and you know, oh. I'm two beers in. It's really <laughs> fucking late. I'm uh, tired. Next game, uh Saturday well, after the Rangers game, uh then we they play it Saturday at Minnesota, seven PM. And Wednesday versus Dallas. Let's hope for a fight night yes. on Saturday night. Saturday night uh, is already for fighting. Let's do that at Minnesota. The Wild fans are going to give it to Bennington, so we might as well give them something to you know actually really get upset about. That'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday uh, Dallas is in St. Louis at 6.30. And then Thursday, the Blues close out the season in Dallas at 7 p.m., last game of the regular season. So I'm I'm right in assuming we'll have a show probably Tuesday next week. Yeah, probably. Correct? Yeah, we'll have some kind yeah. of a uh, yeah because Friday was not really gonna work, but the Tuesday sounds no. good. Uh, rapid fire tidbits from around the NHL, uh, real quick. Uh, Hockey Hall of Fame debuts new exhibit celebrating women's history in the sport. Uh, some legendary players, uh, Angela James and uh, Jana Hefford, were on hand, placing trophies named after them into a display case at the shrine to uh, hockey in downtown Toronto. Uh, James is the general manager of the Premier Hockey Federation's Toronto Six. Hefford is an operations consultant with the Professionals, Professional Women's Hockey Players Association. Um, and she was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2018. 
The exhibit includes nearly 100 artifacts from over 130 years of women's his, uh, hockey history. Some highlights include the Clarkson uh, Cup, Abby Hoffman Trophy, Jana Hefford CWHL MVP Trophy, and Angela James Bowl for the CWHL's top scorer. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, you know, the, the Hockey Hall of Fame does exhibits throughout the year, you know, just like any big hall of fame or anything like that any kind of uh uh, anything that showcases a sport or an event uh but yeah it's pretty cool um do have a problem though with angela james her team the toronto six uh beat our friend of the show amanda levier uh in the uh isabel cup final so uh screw you toronto six (laughs) but uh we will have amanda on very soon actually probably very early in the summer uh, summer shows, so I uh, expect to hear from Amanda Levier again, who is one of my favorite. It, you know what, <laughs> man? This sounds crazy to say because we've had some excellent guests. She might be my favorite guest we've ever had, wow, and she's a ever. recurring guest now. We had Zipper Zeppa, or you had Zipper Zeppa on during Zipper a- Zeppa. <laughs> we've had Grant Fior, Bernie Federko, yeah, um, Carlo Koliakovo, who was Carlo excellent, Col- yeah. Uh, Jeff Brown, um, Jeff Brown. We've but man, she is so much fun to just sit and talk hockey with. So stay tuned to that episode. Uh, probably, like I said, maybe Ben Hockman April, early May. Ben Hockman. Ben Hockman. Hockman. We've Angela, had Jeremy Rutherford. On Angela Sharp. Times. Jeremy Rutherford. Yeah, uh, Luke Korak was on. Korak. Yeah. Now we're just listing names. Yeah. Is, 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 you Vladimir name it. Chepaturkin. You name it. We've had him on. <laughs> uh, 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 Millen, Greg Millen. That is that is one that I've tried to find. Actually, is is Vladimir Chebaturkin. I want to get him on the show just because of his name. Steve Bushnevich. <laughs> one we day sh- we should have Bushnevich on and uh, uh, tell him the Steve story. Uh, yes. he he probably wouldn't think it's near as funny as we do. <laughs> He'd probably be like, oh, okay, who Thanks. who is who is this? Uh, you got, who is so this you Buscemi? got my so you got my name wrong. Okay, <laughs> yeah. thanks. Yeah, who hasn't? <laughs> next next question. <laughs> um and uh and to uh Carson Breer uh has been removed from Mercyhurst University's NCAA hockey team. The uh, university announced on Monday he is the son of Flyers GM Daniel Breer. News comes after a viral video was released showing Breer pushing an unoccupied unoc- an unoccupied wheelchair down a staircase at a bar on March 11th. I guess the only thing worse would be pushing an occupied wheelchair down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I should laugh. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That would be much worse. That would be much yes. worse. Oh, my God. That would be worse. Um, uh, Breer is 23. That would be making national news. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, he'd be in jail. Uh, Breer, 23, uh, 23 uh, and Mercyhurst lacrosse player Patrick Carosi were charged on March 20th with criminal mischief, conspiracy to commit criminal mischief, and disorderly conduct according to Erie County Records, and uh, I think Donald Trump's name was on there, too. That's one of the... Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> he was also found, he's also indicted for that. One of the yep. uh, 300,000... Yes. Stormy uh, Daniel, Daniels is actually the one that posted the video. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Trump pushing oh. a wheelchair down the stairs. Uh, but it was a large staircase. It was the best staircase you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> uh no, I, uh, ugh, I mean, I, I know we're cracking jokes here, but uh, as a parent of a special needs child, um, this one hit me a little harder, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? I, I saw some people saying, so? It was unoccupied. Who cares? You don't know where the person was who needs that wheelchair. Well, chances Shh. are, I think it was, he was had to be helped down the stairs because the bathroom was downstairs. It, it was, right. it, it was, it was a lady. The lady. They right. left and, the wheelchair at the top, top of the stairs and she was helped downstairs to go to the bathroom and wheelchairs are expensive, you know, and chances right. are it was damaged and that was a, a long, a big staircase and it tumbled down. Something was bent, broken on, I'm sure, probably. Um, you know, they're thousands of dollars. And uh, and let me ask you guys. I mean, we we were all stupid fucking teenagers and, and late or early 20s. Like, I, were you ever in a situation where you're like, ah, fuck this wheelchair? I, like, <laughs> not that not that <laughs> exact scenario. Uh, I, I, you know, I was, as a kid, I did stupid stuff. Um, I said stupid stuff. I didn't really know what I was saying or doing. 
um, which is kind of why I don't like it when people go back and grab athletes' tweets when they were teenagers um, and stuff and uh, call them out as uh, racists or bigots or whatever. I'm like, you know, that was 15 years ago. I mean, they've matured, hopefully, you know. Uh, but anyway, I, I, and I've said, I said and did a lot of stupid stuff, but I would, I, a wheelchair? Um, I would have never you know, vandalized uh, somebody's, like, that's... No. Well, and, and you guys you guys brought up that, you know, the bathroom was at the bottom of the stairs and the, the female that was using it was down there. He didn't know that. No. The person who needed that wheelchair could have been upstairs, I don't know, for whatever reason, got out, somebody helped him across the, the dance floor or whatever, they left the wheelchair there. Then they're going to come out to find their wheelchair at the bottom of the fucking stairs? How are they going to get that out? You know, you don't know the situation when you do this shit. So for me, I want to see this kid punished. I'm not saying he needs to spend time in jail or he no. needs – but the fact that, that he was removed from the school's team – and yeah. probably has damaged any hopes he has of playing professional hockey. Sorry, kid. Well, Sometimes all it takes is one. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, it depends how good he is. If it if it damages his his NHL hopes or not. Um, but yeah, no, I I like the fact that you know uh, actions have consequences, right? And this was a stupid action, and it has consequences so i think uh if he had known oh if i get caught pushing this down the stairs i'll be kicked off the team um he wouldn't do it so i think that uh that part of the punishment is is fine i think he, he faces other charges too so we'll see what happens there and you know it's it, it, i'm glad he's not getting special treatment because of who he is i'll say that yeah yeah, it seems like his dad is actually very pissed off at him. It should be. Did you see his dad's statement? No. He was basically like, you know, because, I don't know, I guess he played for the Junior Flyers for a while, too, so they kind of had to make a statement in that sense. But, you know, Briere is the, Danny Briere is the GM of the Flyers, and he basically said that, you know, he has spoken with his son, and he is very, he you know, he understands that it was not the right call, but if you if you read the statement closely – you see it as a very disappointed dad. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, good for and, you, Danny Breer. <laughs> and you know, and again, let's look back. Let's from the other side of the coin. He is kind of a, was twenty three. Yeah, twenty three. Yeah, he's not exactly a kid. I mean, he's no. young, but he's not a kid. So he, I mean, he should know better. Um, I would say if he's if he was eighteen or something or seventeen, that's a little different story. But he's an adult. So I mean, he's yeah. he's two years away from getting cheaper insurance. So he's an adult. <laughs> he can he can almost get into Dave and Buster's and bring in underage children with him. <laughs> so you know, part of me is like, well, you know, he'll grow out of it. He should know better. I'm like, yeah, you're 23, man. You're you're kind of maybe who you are at 23 to some degree. I don't know. Maybe you're still pretty young, or immature. I don't know. Um, could have been just drunk too. You know, stupid drunk thing. And that's probably what it was. I've done plenty of stupid drunk shit, but man, again, fucking with somebody's wheelchair. Yeah, Come on, uh, man. yeah, and I get it. I, it's just it, you. You can't allow that to slide. It's on video. It's, you got to punish him. Um, yep. Hopefully, that's not the kind of person he is. Hopefully, he was drunk and stupid and not in his right mind, and would never do this again. And has learned, you know, his lesson or whatever. I don't know, but we'll see. <clears throat> Uh, producer Austin goes on assignment for two weeks, so he'll he'll be. It's written here he will be missed for that time. Missed, really? Okay, kid, what are you doing for two weeks? I am going on a two week road trip for two weeks. Yes, a two week road trip for oh, two weeks. You're going with your dad. That's right. That's yeah. adorable. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. adorable, and they're they're going to go 350 miles a day. Right, you're taking your dad's Tesla. Oh, yeah. Is that the, yeah, is that the limit? Charges. Is that the range limit? Three fifty. It takes. It takes about ten to twenty minutes to charge, and you're on. That's it. Really? Ten to twenty yeah. minutes. Yeah. That's... Not not back to full, but like till like you need to get to the next charger, and then I mean it's not bad. Like, it's not I, bad at all. I saw a guy uh, taking a trip um, in a Tesla and. 
he was uh, being told where the next charging station was, and he was he was getting close. He wasn't he think okay, I can make this if I, you know, I can make this. And he gets there, and it was outdated info, and it was like an old like shop that was no longer around. There was no charging station, yeah. so he's got like ten miles left to go, and he's like, I got to find a thing, and he couldn't find it. So make sure yeah. your charging stations are where they're supposed to be. Yeah, my dad, uh, he does <laughs> a lot of research before before doing can, all this. Which can you nice. uh can you get like uh like portable ones that'll just give you like a couple extra miles and that kind of thing? No? You can you can plug one so there is a way that you can plug it into a wall. Like like a regular wall outlet. It charges like slower though, right? Very slow. <laughs> like you get like one percent every two hours, every three what? hours. Ooh. Yeah, that's so low. Like, I feel like that's. Yeah. I feel like that it's, sounds accurate. So when you guys stop Shit. overnight, do you do that just to like, why not? Yeah, he'll he'll plug in because it's free. Uh, yeah. it's just at the hotel. But then we'll stop at like a charger later yeah. on in the day. Okay, like, uh, it, it's uh there. There's a charging station, a level one charging station in Troy, Kurt, mm-hmm. at, at the Holiday Inn. We have a Holiday Inn. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it is. Uh, it's it's right over there by Taco Bell. Oh, oh wow. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just okay. Did a brain freezer. And there's a charging station. Hmm. Free or you gotta like uh, is it in a lot? I guess. Uh, it's it is. Uh, I think I think you have to stay there, but I don't. Know. I, I can't imagine. I think you can. You probably charge. charge. Like maybe you gotta, yeah, like a, you gotta use your room that, card. There's that much demand for it. Yeah, maybe not so much in Troy. Although you do see a lot of Teslas in Edwardsville. Yeah, so that's that. The last three years, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's almost like being in California. Yeah, they're uh, they're multiplying. Uh, Matt, I'll message you. I'll actually be in Tucson on the fifteenth. Ooh, we might have a little Ooh. Let's Go Blues Radio meetup without you guys. How about that. <laughs> Wait, why did you yeah. change my name, you jackass? I didn't <laughs> change anything. What are you uh-huh. talking about? <laughs> All right. It's, it's, that was Chat GPT that did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chat GPT it's, did that. It just it's knows. Over. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. You just now noticed. It says, <laughs> well, like two I, it says uh, tournament wow. loser dumbass, is what it when says. When I rejoined, I, because I fucked up the ad roll, yeah. I, I changed it to producer dumbass. No. Now it says tournament, tournament loser. loser, dumbass. Whatever. <laughs> I like how I, the, I like till, how the uh, I like how the dumbass part was the, the acceptable part of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I can't I'm wait till Jason Miller, part. crappy goalie, hears this episode. He's gonna laugh his ass off. <laughs> Cheating bitch. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and so, when do you leave, Austin? I leave Monday morning at like six in the morning. Six in the morning. Nice. Sex in the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's completely different than afternoon delight. Six is good. I like six. <laughs> How about six? <laughs> some, some Seinfeld, Austin. I'm sure you don't know that. <sighs> All right. We, we wrapping the show up now. We done. It's over two hours. Uh, Austin, let us go long again. We didn't know. have Chat GPT write our ending. We should have done that. <laughs> we should have. Maybe next week. Yep. Maybe next week. Hold on. Hold on, uh, hold on for what? Yeah, I think he wants to do it, but it's too late, Austin. <sighs> oh. We're not sitting around and waiting. Yeah. And plus, you got to like proofread it and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I think uh, we just close normal. Support for Let's Go Blues Radio is brought to you in part by ID Life, the world's only truly personalized vitamin platform based on a health assessment of your DNA. Visit rockin'thatidlife.com for more information. That's rockin'thatidlife.com and get 10% off by emailing Dustin at rockin'thatidlife at gmail.com and tell him Let's Go Blues Radio sent you. And by Mark Burgoyne from Real Brokerage Realty. Visit strikewithmike.com today for all of your home buying and selling needs. That's strikewithmike.com and by Center Ice Brewery, St. Louis's tasty hockey themed beer. Check out your local beer stores for availability. That's Center Ice Brewery beer. Please drink responsibly. That will wrap up episode. This is an old copy. Where, what episode are we on? 30. Do you know? One. 31. Episode 31 of season 11 of the original St. Louis Blues Hockey Podcast. Let's go, Blues Radio. Thanks for listening and thanks to those who participated in the YouTube and Facebook live chats during the live show. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you. For Jeff Ponder and Bill Day, I'm Kurt Price. Until next time, everyone, 
Wear the jersey. Let's go, Blues. Let's go, Blues. Let's go, City. All for City, baby. Let's go, Blues. Let's go, Blues. Uh, the Chiefs are at home tonight against Cyanusport at the War Memorial at 8. Good seats are still available. A look at sports. I think that went very well. Thank you for listening to Let's Go Blues Radio. Now take off, hosers. I want you to have a heart attack and die so that we never have to do this shit again. Well, there's 90 minutes of your life you'll never get back. Sorry. (laughs) St. Louis Blues. St. Louis Blues. Have you heard the news about our St. Louis Blues? They've only just begun. They're on their way to number one. Now there's no more blues for our St. Louis Blues. The blues are on the ice tonight again. They're rough and tough and got the stuff to win. They'll always get one more, no matter what the score. They are quite a hockey team, my friend.